Welcome to Grey Cup Forecast 1972, live from Iverwind Stadium in Hamilton, brought to you by Phillips, the electronics people. By Sun Life of Canada, the Tomorrow Builders. everybody. Welcome to Great Cup Forecast 1972. Here at Iverwind Stadium, it's a gorgeous day for football. It's all and more than anybody could have possibly hoped for to get this 1972 championship underway. The temperature is about 32 degrees. The wind is about 10 miles an hour. And we're going to talk to some of the coaches and the players, the people involved, the personalities, and the people who have all gone together to make this 72 Great Cup championship such an outstanding event and I think probably one of the great games that we'll have ever seen in Grey Cup competition. We're standing by with a lot of people and to our special guests, some of them we would like to them to take home this, the new, uh, uh, well, these two gifts from Phillips the Electronics people with their new adjustable shaver and of course the specially engraved uh, cufflinks from the Sun Life people, the hosts on uh, the previews during the playoffs and uh, the forecast uh, right here in the, the 1972 Grey Cup game. Well, now I have with my great pleasure to bring in Al McCann from Edmonton, who's worked with us for these so many years. And on my right side, Ken Lewins from Calgary. And together we'll be talking to the coaches and the players. But fellas, as you worked with uh, Calgary and Edmonton over the years, and now you're working with Saskatchewan and Hamilton getting ready for, what about the, what about the reaction of the team, the players, as you, as you prepared for the forecast, uh, Al? Johnny, I was amazed yesterday at the last practice the Saskatchewan Upriders had. We were out here. They were a relaxed gang of guys. Uh -huh. I guess that's the veterans in them. They were kibitzing around. They know how tough Hamilton is here at home, but I think they feel they're a team of destiny. They beat Edmonton. They then beat Winnipeg. They think they can make it three. What about you, uh, Ken? Well, uh, Chuck Ely did mention that it's a little difficult sometimes to separate yourself from the activity. But Angie Masca, Garney Henley, they were relaxed. The whole team is relaxed. This could be the two most relaxed football clubs <laughs> to ever appear in the Grey Cup final. All right, we'll let you move down to the far ends of the field. We'll get ready to meet some of your very first guests. We'll return with the 1972 Grey Cup forecast in just a moment. Well, with these little uh, gifts from the uh, Sun Life people, our sponsors, we can play it neutral today, and somebody else who kind of has to play it neutral is the commissioner, Jake Adar. Jake, in your fondest moments, did you think that you could have forecast that the 1972 Great Cup could have been this successful, totally, the total involvement of the people of Hamilton? Well, knowing, John, the people of Hamilton, uh, I thought it could. I know a lot of people thought that uh, Hamilton as a city was too small, and certainly we, we did have some problems with accommodation or lack of it, but uh, I think Hamilton as a whole city has proven, uh, just like uh, Mac Heron, I suppose, has proven that size doesn't mean anything. It's uh, spirit and heart. Well, they certainly did. I don't think there's anything they attempted that other uh, Great Cup committees had attempted that these people haven't surpassed. Well, at this point in time, I suppose we'll assess all of that after the week, but uh, certainly I'm not aware of any shortcomings that have arisen. Uh, as a result of any uh, lack of facilities here and uh, even all of their uh, their church programs uh, that they have had on today john might have had something to do with this gorgeous weather that we have for gray cup today <laughs> well i was just going to say that you've done a good job of controlling things including the weather and uh, it's just going to be a gorgeous day and uh, jake we would like you to have uh, just to remind you of your visit with us the new philly shave and uh, the set of cufflinks from uh, Sun Life people at Tomorrow Builders. As a reminder of joining us with us on uh, Great Cup Forecast today. Thank you very much. And Thank let's you, now go down there to Al McCann. Well, thanks, Johnny. I've got the head coach of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, the Western champions, Dave Scrine, who uh, appears very relaxed on the outside. I don't know how it is inside, coach, but this isn't really new to you. You were a, a Western champion coach in 1964 in the East, and you came up with a winner, and you got a great performance from Joe Cap that day. And You know, it's ironic. This day you've got another veteran quarterback going for you. Both great quarterbacks, and I'm sure we'll get the same type of performance from Lancaster. Our squad certainly appears to be ready, and we're very anxious to go. Dave, tell me, the good weather, they say, some people feel, will favor Hamilton because uh, you're noted to be a real tough weather team. You play really good football in bad weather. Well, we like any kind of weather. We just don't let bad weather bother us. But we're, we're very happy to have a good day. The wind doesn't look too tough. Of course, the field is great. Dave, if there's one key, is it containing that man, Chuck Ely? 
that has to be a big key for us, not only containing him, but tackling him. He gets away from so many tackles, jumps up inside the blockers and, and the tacklers, and sometimes uh, beats you by running up the middle as well as getting outside. What kind of a game can we expect, Dave, from your point of view? High scoring or tough defense? I really don't know, Al. I think it could go either way. Uh, I think there will be some touchdowns scored in the game by both teams. Dave, thanks very much, and the very best of luck. Thank you, Al. Now let's swing down to Ken Newen. Okay, thank you very much. We have Jack Matheson, Winnipeg Tribune with us. Jack, certainly Hamilton have proven that people other than Toronto and Montreal and Vancouver can host a Grey Cup. They certainly have. They've done everything. I don't know if they've missed a thing here, Ken. I'm very happy. They, we worried about hotel accommodations. That's been good as far as I'm concerned. They haven't missed a thing. What about these two football clubs? They're talking about being a classic. Do you think it can be? I would think it will be a classic, but we'll, you notice, Ken, you're a Westerner. We get the old oversell every time we come down here, and we're getting it again this year. I don't think Hamilton's as good as they think that they are down here, and uh, I think that uh, we have a few things going for us from the Western uh, viewpoint. 35,000 people, though, and the excitement surrounding this Hamilton club is bound to buoy them a little bit, though, isn't it? Well, but uh, they won't have 35,000 Hamiltonians, hopefully, and so it's up to the Western fans to drown them out, perhaps out to uh, make more noise than they. I think that knowing Westerners, we can probably do that. What about Saskatchewan? Were they lucky against Winnipeg, or are they going to come up big today? Well, they were lucky that Winnipeg lost their poise in the last quarter. That's luck. That's all I know. Uh, I, I thought that the Rough Riders would probably win the game, but when Winnipeg did get that 17-point uh, lead, I thought they were pretty comfortable. But uh, that's why I think the Rough Riders will win today. They just uh, the, the little guy's got too much savvy, too much guile, too much poise, and uh, the other guy is a rookie. Jack, the score. 24-14 for the Rough Riders. Thank you very much. Go count your money. Okay. Okay, now down to Al McCann. Well, I've got George Reed, the great veteran court, uh, fullback, at least, of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. And, George, I was just thinking, standing here, you've played in all kinds of weather conditions and in all kinds of fields. This has to be about the best, eh? Yes, it is. Uh, for this time of year, the field's in nice condition. We've got good weather here and everything. So... We hope they will produce a very good football game today. George, are you one of the players who likes uh, artificial surfaces, or would you rather play on grass? Well, I'd rather play on grass if it was ideal, but very seldom we have ideal conditions, uh, especially this time of year. And uh, this astral turf here, I think, is uh, a little bit better than tartan turf, and uh, really doesn't make what, what kind of field conditions. I think it's, it's a bill up in the head. You have to relax and, uh, and get used to what you have to play on. George, you've had another super year, over 1,000 yards again. I thought you had a particularly great game against Winnipeg. How do you feel your club uh, is uh, uh, feeling about this game? Do you feel you're as ready as you can be? Well, we're a good football team, and we're all up. We're ready. Uh, we're raring to go and everything, and it's just uh, a matter of getting the game on the way and everything. It takes a little while to get these festivities over with and everything, but uh, we are ready to go. Might take a few points to beat this Hamilton club. Well, I think it will. We have to score some points and keep the ball away from them some and everything, and our defense have to play big and everything. We just have to go out and play our game and try to control the ball and score some points. Okay, George, good luck in the game. Thank you. Down to Ken Newens now has coach Jerry Williams. Jerry, how have you been able to keep the football club out of the excitement that surrounds them here in Hamilton this week? Well, of course, you don't want to keep them away from everything, but uh, at the same time, they have to they have to concentrate on the main objective, and that's winning this football game, and I think they've done a good job of it. Have your practices differed any this week than in for a normal game? Well, we've had to alter our practice schedule because we're sharing the, the field with the Saskatchewan. And, of course, the certain functions uh, which are mandatory to make uh, had to alter our practice schedule, but other than that, not too much difference. In 68, when you took the Sam Peters to the Grey Cup, you had injuries, but I think your team is pretty healthy today, is it not? Very healthy, yes. We're very fortunate. Do you think that, uh, will you give Chuck Ely, your rookie quarterback, more guidance today than you normally do in an, in an ordinary game? Well, we, we talk it over on the sidelines in ordinary games, and we'll, we'll do the same thing uh, in this game. If I feel a play should be sent in, I'll send it in. Otherwise, uh, he's got it, and, and then we discuss it at, uh, on the sidelines and at halftime. Jerry, thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Jerry Williams. Now here's Johnny Esau. Okay, and at the beginning of the season, they forecast that Jerry Williams would make a great opportunity and a change for this Hamilton club, and he really has. We'll return with the 1972 Grey Cup forecast in just a moment. And again, we'd like to uh, remind uh, the folks that they'll have souvenirs. The new Philly shave, the adjustable one, and the specially engraved uh, cufflinks from Sun Life. And now we're ready to go with more of our special guests. And here is Ken Newins. Thank you. We have Garney Hanley. So I'll turn my Sun Life card to Hamilton right now. Garney, you're just praising this field. I understand it's a receiver's dream to play on this field. Well, I think it's a football's dream as far as I'm concerned. It's uh, The footing is 
just about always good. The only time it will get a little slippery when it's wet, but uh, if you have the right uh, footwear, there's no problem whatsoever. Some of the experts are saying that maybe Saskatchewan secondary might be their weakest part of their game. Now, you're a receiver. Do you uh, agree with that? Well, I don't think they have too many weak spots, really, but uh, we, you know, we, we feel that we can uh, pass on them, and uh, we hope to explore uh, some of their uh, zones and so forth, and uh, we'll have to throw long occasionally and keep them uh, from getting in a little bit too tight. So uh, we feel that there's, uh, there are weaknesses, yes. They would, wouldn't have the same kind of gung-ho defense that Ottawa had, would they? No, I don't think so. They're a little bit different type. Uh, however, their zones are basically the same, but Ottawa played a little bit more man-to-man. -man. Shenley for Henley, thank you very much. Very good, thank okay, you. Okay, thank you, Garney Henley. Here's Al McCann. Western All-Star Bill Baker. Bill, uh, defensive end is a tough job today, particularly when you have to contain that man, Chuck Healy. Well, this is the biggest game we de defensive ends have had to play. Chuck Healy's an awful man to contain. They do an excellent job of getting outside. And we have to stop them. We have to stop them. We expect to win this game, and we're hoping we can do it. Actually, are you working anything new? Because uh, on an artificial field like this, he has great footing. He does, and so do we. And we just hope we can keep up to him and play our normal rock em, sock em game and get to him. Lots of notoriety for Bill Baker this year. I know a lot of it didn't sit too well with you, Bill, but you're an all-star football player. And every coach I talked to says you had a super year. I had a, a good year, I felt. In the middle of the season, I did slow down a little bit because of the adverse press I got. Uh, but... Uh, being a professional athlete, you have to expect this, and I just hope today I can come up big and do some of the bad things they've been telling me I've been doing. Is this uh, the best Saskatchewan team you've been with? I don't know. This is a great team. We've had a great year this year, and I guess right now it is the greatest team I've ever been on in my whole life. Bill, the very best of luck this afternoon. Thank you very much. Bill Baker of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, down to Ken. Angela Mosca, your last game. You've thrilled uh, a lot of people, and I suppose cheers and boos from across the country. What are your thoughts, Angie, as you prepare for this the great game on your last game before your hometown fans? Well, by the grace of God, it's a beautiful way to end it. I am going to try to give my best performance just like 31 other guys. I know it'll be a good, hard-fought game. I've always had a lot of respect for Regina. Uh, we played a similar type game and uh, made the best team win. And uh, we'd like to tell you to your face right now, you've always, you've always made a great contribution, Angie. What about their offense? I suppose Lancaster has to be the key, and Reed will be running at you quite a bit this afternoon. Well, I think, if, yes, he will be. I think if you think back to 1967, and if we can keep George under 100 yards, I think we've got one heck of a possibility to win this football game. And the second big one, I think, is Ronnie Lancaster. I got all the respect in the world for him. He's a great uh, contributor to the league. Uh, just a great quarterback and a real smart one, and that's the second half we got to start. My seven-year-old boy, Michael, wants to know if you really do eat bananas. Well, only when I'm in a cage. Thank you very much, John C. Now, Johnny Issa. <laughs> right, Ken, and in 45 minutes, the kickoff will take place right out there at center field, right behind us, and what an exciting moment that's going to be. Well, you know, 20 years ago, the Shenley Awards started, and what a great part it has been of this Grey Cup Festival. And the man who was the coordinator just 10 years ago, now the president of the Shenley Company, my good friend Don McNaughton. Don, it's, it's been quite a transition in those 20 years, and we've had uh, just as great a moment of excitement in the, in the decision this year, but for the first time I noticed the losers exhibiting publicly their dissatisfaction with not winning. That's strange. Well, John, you know, I've sat beside them uh, while the uh, performance was going on, and they, they really are uptight. Uh, we think it is actually a compliment to the uh, degree that the awards have arrived at. Uh, well, I can't blame these fellas for being uh, a little upset. It's, it means so much to them. And uh, they express their feelings, and then I think they are pretty well calmed down now, I think, though. So. Let me congratulate you for adding the Rookie of the Year award. I think with Campana and Ely battling for that, I, it was just the, the extra dimension that was needed. Yeah, I think it made it a lot more good, especially with, I think, the winner this year, the Rookie Award, was uh, a popular win and um, a great player, and we're glad to see him in the game. Now your forecast, your great cup forecast. See, I, I think I, the forecast, from, as far as I'm concerned, is the fans are going to have the greatest game ever. <laughs> Thank you very much, Don McNaughton. We'll return with the 1972 great cup forecast in just a moment. And in 40 minutes, the kickoff of the 1972 Grey Cup will take place. Let's go down to a man who's predicted it for the last three or four years in a row, Andy O'Brien. Let's see if he can do it again. Okay, Al. Well, that's right, Johnny. Uh, the sports editor of Weekend Magazine, the very well-known and very well-respected Andy O'Brien. Andy, you're telling me 26th Grey Cup, so you've seen a lot of them. Have you ever seen a better day for the Grey Cup? Oh, this is fabulous. This, this carpet enhances everything, and this Hamilton has done a whale of a job at it. 
This is the ideal setting. The wind is blowing quite strongly now from the look of the flags. I would say that Saskatchewan seems awfully loose out there. Hamilton, on the other hand, seems rather tight. Uh, but we'll soon know. You know, there's one thing we're going to find out right now because the way you've been forecasting it for the last three years, people don't have to uh, bet on the score. They can just wait to see what you say. You were right on twice in a row and just missed by three points. How do you see it this uh, this year? No, I was on three times in a row. Three now. in a row now. Maybe I should quit while I'm ahead. <laughs> no, especially today with the betting going against, uh, against me. I like Saskatchewan. I like their interior rushing power. I like the more mature quarterback for a day like this and uh, the looseness of the team. But I tell you, everything is so equal that I'm going back to one basic statistic, Al. Seven of the last ten games has been won by the team with the lowest against points in their conference over the season, and that's Saskatchewan. Hamilton was second lowest. So if I'm, I'm reaching for straws, but we have to take a pick. I'm picking Saskatchewan by five points, about 26-21. Thank you, Andy. 26-21 right. from Andy O'Brien for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. How about that, Ken? Okay, John uh, Helton is with us, Al. John, I'd like to know something. Lancaster, they claim, is one of the best people at the line of scrimmage checking off to another play. Now, as a defensive lineman, does he give it away when he's checking off? Can, he, can you tell what he might be doing or when he's checking off? You not really, no. I'll, you can't really tell when he is, but you just maybe get a sneaky suspicion. And when uh, you think you might, like me as a lineman, I might anticipate something. Maybe if I know it's only maybe two yards to go, if it's five or six yards to go, then uh, if it's only about two yards to go, you know he's going to either come off tackle right off the guard's tail, you know, to the outside. He'll probably veer offside. So usually uh, us defensive linemen will call the linebackers up a little closer because we anticipate them uh, running off tackle, you know. How do you analyze the Hamilton defense now? How do, what do you think he'll try and do against them? I think he might just sh uh, throw short passes, maybe just 10, 12-yard hooks, uh, quick outs. If it's real windy, which it is looking to the flag there, uh, probably run George Reed on a, a lot of uh, screens, probably draws, things like right. that. Who's going to win? I can't tell you who's going to win. I think Regina will win, but... Uh, I don't know. I don't think they'll win maybe more than three points if they do. John, I understand you've had such a good time this week that you'd like to be a Shenley Lineman of the Year every year. I sure would. <laughs> but you think it's a little selfish. John, That's thank you is. very much. Okay, let's now go down to, Alma, to John Esau. Pardon me. Johnny? You know, the Grey Cup uh, grows and grows and grows, and that means that the, the headaches get larger and larger every year for Jim Vipon, the guy who tries to sort out the press, the radio, the television, all the accreditation. Jim, what is the total? What is the final tabulation of those in attendance at uh, 1972? 381 bodies, John, including your television crews, the press, radio, photographers, the whole ball of wax. Well, every year you always come up with some special requests from somewhere. Uh, do we have one of those stories this year? We've got a correspondent from Malaysia sitting in the press box this afternoon. That's a Plus, switch. Uh, yeah, we've got Sports Illustrated very interested. They've got a jet liner standing by to fly their photographer back at the end of the first quarter today, apparently. Well, how have you, have you, how have you been able to accommodate everybody? Well, we've got a block of seats uh, underneath the regular press box, but 150 seats, which the commissioner put at the press's disposal mm -hmm. to get the overflow. So you got everybody looked after? Everybody's looked Every, after. Everybody, no gripes, eh? Oh, no. How about your they never gripe. <laughs> How about your forecast, Jim? Well, I like handling what, 48-21. Okay, thank you very much, Jim Vipon, the man who has to worry about all the accreditation. Let's go back down there to Ken Newens. We have with us Frank Rigney, now a CBC sports commentator and, of course, a former Shenley Award winner. Who's going to win and why, Frank? Well, Ken, unfortunately, I think the Hamilton Tiger Cats are going to win because, and I say unfortunately because I, I'm certainly cheering for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders with our, our Western sentimental favorites, but I think the Hamilton Tiger Cats have a better defensive ball club than Saskatchewan. I don't think uh, Saskatchewan is going to be able to establish their ground game, certainly not nearly as well as they did against Winnipeg. Uh, How's Chuck Ely going to perform? Oh, I think uh, he's going to create a lot of problems for the Saskatchewan defense, and I don't think they can contain him on the outside. Somebody said that Lancaster will try and pick on the linebackers with short passes. I think he'll do that, and I think he'll also screen quite a bit, probably to his left. What do you think of the festivities in Hamilton this week? It's been a great town. I think the town has done a, a great job. That Hall of Fame is just incredible, and I certainly encourage people to go take a look at it if they get down here. Okay, Frank, thank you very much. Thank you, Okay, Ken. Frank Rigney, and now here's Johnny Esau. Okay, well, Ted Blackman from the Montreal Gazette. Ted, what's your forecast for this ball game? I think Paul Henderson is going to score a winning goal <laughs> in the last minute. Hey, no, no, we're back from Moscow now. Who's going to win trouble. this one? I've been in Moscow, uh, it <laughs> seems to be, for the rest of the whole year, so I don't, can't really tell. The only thing that I can offer is that I had a long talk, conversation with, with Ronnie Lancaster mm -hmm. the other day, and 
he said that Jerry Williams may be the finest coach in the country and that he has the most clever, imaginative, and well-disciplined defensive secondary in football and that he considers that a problem to throw against today. As and a I result think, of that, how are you going to forecast I'm that? going to call Hamilton on that strength, on the strength of Ronnie Lancaster's concern over passing against Hamilton. Good judgment. Thank you very much, Ted. We'll return with the 1972 Grey Cup forecast in just a moment. Reminder again that uh, we have the pleasure and the privilege of presenting uh, the new uh, filler shave adjustable and these cufflinks from the people who have been able to bring playoff preview and now a great cup forecast to the fans before the big games at the end of the 1972 season. Here again is Al McCann. Well, Al is uh, having just a little bit of trouble down there getting set because we've... <laughs> what? What happened was, what happened was our cameraman almost got hit by Ian Sutter, who was doing some practicing to kicking. Okay, Al, take it away. <laughs> okay, I've got Jim Young, the uh, top Canadian football player, uh, Shenley Award winner for 1972. Uh, Jim, everybody's talking about Chuck Healy today, but is it possible that uh, somebody else might be the pivotal person in this game? Well, uh, quarterbacks both ways. Watch the ball's coming right here. We don't get hit in the head here. You think uh, the quarterbacks are probably the key factor, right? Eh? Very much. Uh, the wind seems to be holding down, and they're going to be able to do what they have in their game plans, uh, going to be able to work on the defenses, and they should be the ones that make things go. Actually, uh, Chuck Healy being a rookie, is that going to be uh, any, is that a factor or not? Uh, yes and no, but watching him through the year, the way he's played, uh, he hasn't looked like a rookie. Uh, he rolls out a little like Ronnie used to do all the time and uh, sets up in that rolling pocket and just has been throwing the ball really well. He has fine receivers, which make it easier for him. Jim, how are you picking the game? I can't pick a winner, you know that, because I'm a Hamilton boy and I play in the <laughs> West. Uh, I'm in trouble either way I go. I know it's going to be a fine game. They're both traditionally uh, hard-hitting clubs, and playing against them, I know they hit, so it's going to be a fine game. Perhaps a little bit high scoring if all goes well. Jim, congratulations on your own personal achievements this year, and best of luck in 73. Thank you very much. Jim Young of the BC Lions. Now let's go back to Johnny. Okay, uh, Alan, in deference to my good friend Bob Scott of the Hamilton Spectator, I'll have to give us the Hamilton side here. Bob, I just a couple of things. First of all, I want to. I, I know that you have offered the congratulations on behalf of the people, but I think your paper, the Hamilton Spectator, has just done a super job in all week preparing for this. The radio stations and the television station here have just been sensational. But you've been covering these Tiger Cats closer than anybody over the last few years. What, what do you get from the inside? What What was the feeling, the inner feeling you got in the last couple of days as they got ready for this one? Well, this is probably the loosest football team I've ever been associated with in my life, Johnny. Uh, it harks back to the 67 team to a degree. And, uh, they got some real characters on here like Fleming, Inskeep, Rick Shaw. And uh, the only time all year that they were really down a little bit was after that game in Ottawa. And uh, even that week, though, they were quite loose. And I think they're going to come up big here today. Well, I was surprised the other day. You and I were standing there. We were laughing and Rick Shaw putting on his little act. Uh, Jerry Williams, you know, is, is, is not an, an outgoing kind of a guy. He's a very concerned, precise kind of a guy, and he never, he never seemed to let them have fun, but they had fun, and this was uh, very exciting, and I just have time to ask you for your predictions. I think Forecast. Tiger Cats about 28-20, roughly, in that area. I think okay. they, with a good day, and the, and the wind isn't that bad. If it was a stronger wind, I don't think there'd be that much scoring. I think they'll take four touchdowns. Okay, Bob Scott of the Hamilton Thank Spectator, you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to Al McCann and Thank the Ken Lewis, to Ock and all these people. That old kickoff is just about 30 minutes away. We want to thank you very much for joining us on this 1972 edition of Grey Cup Forecast. Get ready, because there's a lot more coming up in just a moment. Grey Cup Forecast, 1972, live from Ivor Wynn Stadium. was brought to you by Sun Life of Canada, the Tomorrow Builder. By Phillips, the electronics people.
professional football. Brought to you by Canadian Pacific, working for Canadians in transportation and resource development. By General Motors of Canada and GM dealers from coast to coast. By Electra Home, a Canadian tradition for excellence in home entertainment products. By Old Port, Canada's most famous cigars. By Labatt's Breweries of Canada Limited, brewers of Labatt's 50 and Labatt's Blues. Across Canada, beer at its best. The 1972 Canadian Football League season began July 31st at Iverwind Stadium in Hamilton, and it featured the Saskatchewan Rough Riders and the Hamilton Ticats. Who could have guessed that they would be meeting in the national final? Hello, Canada. Welcome to the 1972 Grey Cup game. I'm Pat Marsden. I have the pleasure today of hosting this 1972 Grey Cup Classic along with my confrere from the CBC, Ernie Afghanis. And what a great ball game this one is expected to be. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders, led by that great veteran quarterback, Ronnie Lancaster, and the rookie from Toledo who guides the destiny of the Hamilton Ticats, Chuck Ely. A tremendous pregame show we have for you on the field. So let's go down now to Ernie Afghanis. All right, Pat, and what a spectacular view from the field here at Iverwind Stadium. There are over 35,000 people in the stands, and over 3,000 of those have traveled all the way from Saskatchewan to be here for this game. They're all cheerleaders, and you know what? Hamilton fans are among the most enthusiastic in North America today, so the sound from below here should be deafening at times during the game. We've got an ideal day. The temperature is 32 degrees, the winds are from the west at 12 miles an hour, and the skies are partly cloudy. There was a threat of snow earlier today, but that has passed by. But the fans here in Hamilton really don't care about the weather. It's fun time in Hamilton. The fans are being entertained by the Western Band, which is the Regina Group, and they've been doing an outstanding job. The Regina Lions Junior Band organized in March of 1964 along with their famous Riderettes. The band here consists of a total of 103 members of boys and girls. We also have the Eastern Band with us, the Hamilton Tiger Cats. The Hamilton Tiger Cat Band, which has played just about everywhere in the world today. The youngsters from the Regina Lions Band traveled all the way here by bus to be with us today. The Riderettes. They will play Space Odyssey Fanfare, another opening, another show, a lot of living you do, and that's entertainment. This band has received outstanding awards, the Riderettes and the Regina Junior, Junior Lions Band, and they've been invited to Pasadena for the Rose Bowl Parade. Well, as we watch some more of the field action, I think it should be said that not only is the pressure on all of the ball players who will be participating in today's contest, but also on the officials, and we're going to get an opportunity of finding out just who is working this ball game a little later on as we go back downstairs to Ernie Afghanis. Regina Lions band with the Riderettes. And the Hamilton Tiger Cat marching band. The 
band director is Robert Mossing, the drum major, Miles Thorson and the majorette, Wendy Harmon, and Brenda Numerick. The coin has been tossed and Hamilton has won the choice. The referee, Don Barker, wearing 26, and linebacker, or line umpire, pardon me, Bill Fryer out there, along with the captains of both teams, Ronnie Lancaster, Bruce Bennett of Saskatchewan, and uh, Garney Henley and Angelo Mosca of Hamilton. They're discussing the options, who will kick off, receive, and defend. And the referee, Don Barker, is there. Hamilton has won the toss, so they have the choice, and we'll have the decision in a moment. The traditional shaking of hands, and they're ready to play, and they will be in a few moments, and we'll get that official decision. Tiger Cats have elected to receive. So Saskatchewan will kick. And that's all the information we have at this moment. Maybe Bob, uh, Don, Don, can I bother you for a moment? Did we get that official decision for our viewers? Uh, Hamilton uh, had the choice and they have elected to receive. And Saskatchewan elected to kick to the scoreboard. Fine. Okay, thank you, Bart. The official Don Barker, wearing 26, and you'll be seeing quite a bit of him throughout the game. Hamilton Tiger Cat Band is still out on the field. And earlier, we listened mainly to the Western Band. Now, the East, as we said, is represented by the Hamilton Tiger Cat Marching Band. And they have 48 members. George Houselander founded this group in 1956, and this is their sixth Grey Cup, an outstanding group, and they have played just about all over the world. They have been to the Rose Bowl, and it's a wonderful day like today. He's right. The band is flanked by the Dorothy Hearst Tigerettes, and the Betty Fice Flashettes. Flashettes on the right. Tigerettes on the left. Very pretty group of girls that have combined for this break up opening show. And this is the first band to introduce what they call a fast cadence in Canada. The Tiger Cat Band was the first marching band in CFL football. The color guard that you pick up in the background carrying flags is made up of groups that were in the parade just yesterday. They have combined to form a color guard. Youngsters from all over the East, some from the West.
Tiger Cat Band moves to Hey, Look Me Over. Flashettes and Tigerettes continue with the baton twirling. You know, these young ladies have been out here for the past five days working on these routines, and early this morning, when it was very cool and brisk. Still going strong, still happy, smiling, enjoying what they're doing here today for this tremendous breakup crowd at Iverwind Stadium in Hamilton. Tiger Cat Band, and if my friends could see me now. Look us over, and if you could see me now, that's what the city of Hamilton has been saying to Canada, and boy, what a tremendous job they've done all week long. We'll continue with more of our pregame Grey Cup activities in just a moment. Half show nice supervisors, the officials at the Eastern Conference, and half we have an outstanding day. You have a great group of officials, but how do you choose them for this particular game, the Grey Cup? Ernie, they're chosen on merit based on the year's performance, the compatibility of the group, the positions allotted to East and West, and generally we try to get the best men available, bearing in mind that we don't use anyone from either of the cities involved in the game. All right. Could you introduce your officials to us? Uh, on my left, the Western Conference officiating supervisor, Mr. Paul Dojak of Regina. Uh, the referee, number 26, Mr. Don Barker from Vancouver. The line umpire, number 32, Mr. Bill Fry from Toronto. The back umpire, number 35, Mr. Maury Mulhern from Vancouver. The field judge, number 30, Mr. Chuck Paul of Ottawa. The head linesman, number 19, Mr. Tom Cheney from Calgary. And the standby official, number 18, Mr. Harry Ross of Lachine, Quebec. All right, the officials for today's game as introduced by Mr. Hap Scholleis. Thank you very, very much, Hap. Thank you, Ernie. Good luck to your group. Thank you very much. Now I'd like to bring in Miss Grey Cup. Come on in, Maria. Maria Gallas, uh, who came to uh, Hamilton as Miss Blue Bomber, and she captivated the judges and the audiences wherever she went. Maria, you did an outstanding job. Congratulations, and I know you've had a very busy week. Yes, it's been very busy and just terrific. Hamilton's been the most wonderful hope 
uh, host that all of us girls could have had. It really has been. Now you're going to have to take an awful lot of prizes back to Winnipeg. How have you worked that out? I think that we're going to just get um, Air Canada or whoever the girls are going back with, and we're going to have them all ship back. There's no way we can take them. Santa Claus has come every single night for all of us. <laughs> I understand they have sort of a reception for you when you get back, or did you know about that? I didn't know anything oh, well, about I, I, I let it out of the bag. <laughs> But uh, you're a graduate from the uh, University of Manitoba in psychology, and yes. I understand you work with retarded children. Yes, I do. I, I have in the past, and I hope to do a lot more in the future. Yes, I have. You're going to continue with that? Yes, I hope to. Actually, I hope to te teach uh, junior school uh, in another country, perhaps, and at a later date when I continue my education. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. What I was wondering, though, while we're... Uh, uh, talking to you about these particular things. I think we have some action on the far side of the field. Maria Gullias, thank you very much for being with us. Lots of luck to you. Enjoy yourself when you get back. Thank you very much. Thank we, you. Actually, we just saw what you'd won on the monitor, and uh, we probably brought that up a little earlier, but thank you again for being with us. Thank you very much. Maria Gullias, who is Miss Grey Cup, and came here, as we said, as Miss Blue Bomber, a very beautiful young lady. All right, I think that we're prepared now for the introduction of the teams. And you know, these teams have fought their way through just tremendous seasons in order to get here. Ladies and gentlemen, in a few minutes, East and West will meet for the Grey Cup. Hamilton and Saskatchewan have defeated all other opposition for the right to meet in this 1972 championship final. To introduce to you the Saskatchewan offense. At center, wearing number 42, Larry Bird. At left guard, wearing 53, Jack Abenchan. At right guard, wearing 57, Gary Brent. At left tackle, 59, Ralph Galloway. The right tackle, wearing number 67, Clyde Brock. The left end, wearing 12, Bob Pierce. The right end, wearing 21, Al Ford. The left half, 17, Tom Campana. The right half, wearing number 26, Bobby Thompson. The fullback, wearing 34, George Reed. The flanker, wearing number 71, Gordy Barwell. And the quarterback, 23, Ronnie Lancaster. This is the rest of the Saskatchewan team and the head coach, Dave Scrine, the Western champions. Now, to introduce to you the very tough Hamilton defensive squad. At left end, wearing 65, Gary Inski. At left tackle, wearing 68, Angelo Mosca. The right tackle, 61, Bruce Smith. The right end, wearing 54, George Wells. The middle linebacker, 45, Mark Cosmos. The left linebacker, wearing 70, Mike Bloom. The right linebacker, wearing 14, Bob Kraus. At the left corner, 23, John Williams. 
at left safety, wearing 17, Rick Shaw. The mid safety, 25, Al Brenner. The right safety, wearing 23, Gary Sternberg. The right corner, wearing 24, Louis Porter. And the rest of the Hamilton Tiger Cats, headed by Chuck Eady, their coach, and their great quarterback, and the coach, Jerry Williams. Those are the Eastern champions. Well, a beautiful afternoon at Jam Pack Stadium and the national championship on the line. We'll be back with the official kickoff right after we see the rest of the players out on the field as they do their pregame warm-ups. The dignitaries are just about to come out onto the field to join us now. And, of course, we are waiting for the arrival of His Excellency, the Right Honorable Roland Michener. Governor General, Mrs. Michener, and you can see Commissioner Jake Goddard in the background. The official party, and in just a few moments, God save the Queen. Well, it's uh, my pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, mesdames, messieurs, extrêmement de plaisir de vous présenter d'abord le commissaire de la Ligue canadienne de football, the commissioner for the Canadian Football League, Mr. Jake Godard. Jake? Merci, Pierre. Il me fait grand plaisir de vous présenter Son Excellence, le Governor General du Canada. Pierre, it's a great honor for me to introduce to all of our television viewers from coast to coast in Canada, His Excellency, the Right Honorable Roland C. Metzner, the Governor General of Canada. Thank you very much, Jake. And, sir, as Governor General and certainly a great sports enthusiast, uh, we would like to know what's your opinion of the Western contenders, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, sir. Well, I've noted that uh, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders have been finalists here in four out of the last eight years. So I, I conclude they're a pretty strong club and uh, in good form. Uh, one could say the same about the Hamilton Tiger Cats, and as Governor General, I stand somewhere in between, so I'll probably root for Thunder Bay today. But we're looking forward to a great game between two teams representing East and West, which will uh, not only give great pleasure to the million fans watching here today, but will be an inspiration and an encouragement to all the young Canadian players who are coming along for the future. So true, sir. Maintenant, titre de Gouverneur Général, si je vous demandais... Votre opinion des Tiger Cats de Hamilton, les champions de l'Est? Vous savez que je suis euh, en position de neutralité comme gouverneur général, mais j'observe euh, que l'équipe euh, des Tiger Cats de Hamilton sont en très bonne forme. Je, peux, je pourrais dire la même chose de l'équipe Saskatchewan. 
je, je m'attends à voir euh, le meilleur match de la saison qui euh, sera qui donnera beaucoup de plaisir à tous les Canadiens qui l'écoutent et qui le, le watch, mais aussi euh, euh, encouragera tous les jeunes Canadiens joueurs de, de football. Thank you very much, sir, and have a good day at the Grey Cup game. Merci infiniment, Monsieur Jay Goddard. Monsieur, Mesdames, Messieurs, le Gouverneur Général du Canada, Monsieur Ronald Mitchner, ladies and gentlemen, the Governor General of Canada, Mr. Mitchner and Mr. Jay Goddard. There were many in the stands who felt that O Canada was not about to be played. That, of course, is not a fact. It will be coming up in just a few moments. But right now, the Governor General is going to go out and see if he can eclipse the official kickoff record, which is held by the Prime Minister of Canada, Pierre Elliott Trudeau. And that apparently is 32 yards. So Mr. Michener, who's a fine physical exponent of fitness, is going to go out and see what he can do. Accompanying the Governor General is the Commissioner of the Canadian Football League, Jake Goddard, who's testing the win for him. Also in the official party is the Premier of Ontario, William Davis, the Premier, Alan Blakeney of Saskatchewan, Mayor Vic Copps of Hamilton, Mayor Walker of Regina, Sir Richard Gray, who's the grandson of Earl Gray. And you can notice him on the right side of your screen. I don't know if he's giving the Governor General any advice, but I'm sure he doesn't need it as he steps off a few paces, and this should be a good one. Because if anybody should be able to get this over 30 yards, I would suspect it would be the Governor General. <laughs> a little direction from Sir Richard Gray. And there it is, and it's a good one. We'll have the official count for you in just a moment. Incidentally, also out at midfield is the president of the CFL, Bill Clark, Festival Committee Chairman Jack McDonald, and Miss Grey Cup, Maria Gulias from Winnipeg. 28 yards, but I think really the wind must have played a factor in that one because it looked pretty good coming off the ground. Incidentally, the national anthem will be sung by Bobby Curtola, Canada's international singing sensation. And that is upcoming momentarily. the official kickoff in just a moment. The riders are set, the cats are set, and so is our broadcast team for the first half from the CBC, Don Chevrier and Russ Jackson. Thank you, Pat Marsden and Russ. Today, a veteran scrambling quarterback in Ron Lancaster. We've seen what he can do over the years, and a sensational rookie in Chuck Ely. And the Hamilton Tiger Cats are set to receive the opening kickoff with Porter and Clark back to receive the kick from number 53, Jack Avanchan of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. This Grey Cup game, 1972, is underway. Clark. Near the 35-yard line. Tim Roth, 66, and Archie McCord, number 58, were the downfield tacklers for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. 
Don Jack Avinson had the opening kickoff there, but here we see the Governor General, Roland Michener, kicking off and getting a good one away, about 25 yards. And Jack Avinson had one just slightly longer. Hamilton, the first play from scrimmage in the game from the 34-yard line. The pitch to Dave Fleming, number 21, short side. He's got five. He's got close to a first down to the 44-yard line. Chased out by Wayne Shaw, number 50, on the corner, the linebacker for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Fleming, who averaged 4.1 throughout the regular season, gets close to 10 in the first play of the Grey Cup game. Don, you might say that's a bit of a surprise with Dave Fleming carrying the ball on the first play from the line of scrimmage because Dave Buchanan has been the outstanding ball carrier for the Tiger Cats throughout the regular season and the playoffs. This is second down. Half a yard away from a first down. Chuck Ely straight ahead, and he has the Hamilton first down across the 45-yard line. Sound second down call by the rookie Hamilton quarterback, the outstanding rookie player in Canada, 1972. To set the Hamilton offense for you in this game, of course, Ely, 16, is the quarterback. The running backs are Dave Fleming, 21, and Dave Buchanan, number 20. Garney Henley is the flanker, number 26, with the slot back Bob Richards at number 71. This is first down. Ely, the draw. Buchanan, near center field, the 54-yard line. He's going to have a gain of eight on the play. It was stopped by Charlie Collins, the ex-Montreal Alouette, number 31, on the corner for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. And Buchanan is still down. Dave Buchanan, the leading rusher in the East, injured on his first carry of this Grey Cup game. And a concerned Jerry Williams on the sidelines. He can ill afford to lose Buchanan, certainly this early in a Grey Cup game. Help to his feet now and making his way slowly at Crossfield to the Hamilton Tiger Cat bench. Might see it again, Russ, as to what happened to Dave Buchanan on that play. Well, from the end zone camera, we see Chuck Ealy here going back now and running this draw play straight up the middle. And actually, the Regina Rough Riders were in a man-to-man -man defense on the right-hand side of their defensive front wall. And that gave Buchanan plenty of room up the center. Dick Wesolowski is in there, number 27, replacing him. Throws a block for Ealy, who's loose at the 45. This is Saskatchewan 37-yard line. 19 yards, the length of that game. Bruce Bennett... One of the deep backs, the safety number 30, made the tackle. Well, one of the things they've been talking about all week, Don, is that they must keep Chuck Ealy in the pocket. And this time he rolled straight out. He had no intention of throwing that ball at all. And Dick Wesolowski got out in front of him, got tripped up, and then Chuck Ealy came around for the big, big game. But he had no intention of throwing that ball from the time he took it from the center. Some of that planned scrambling they talk about with respect to Ely and the Tiger Cats this year. Now he misses an assignment, one of his backs. This time he's got a bailout, and he can't. Krasinski has him back at the 43-yard line, number 27. The loss is going to be six yards on the play. Don, I think that was Chuck Ealy's mistake there because all the line and all the backs went to the left. Chuck Ealy went to the right, and there was no one to hand the ball off to. And he took a pretty good stick in there after they got him. Dave Scry, the head coach of the Western Rough Riders, good news for Hamilton fans, Number 20, Buchanan, is back in there. Second down, 15. Ely for Henley, it is too far. Number 16, Lewis Cook, back defending for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. It will now become third down and 15 for the Tiger Cats. That was their first pass attempt of the afternoon. Ticats driving from inside their 35 down to the Saskatchewan 42 and now in third down must punt. The Hamilton putter is Bill Van Berkleo, number 10, with a seasonal average of just under 40 yards, 39.1. Steve Moeller, number 19, and Jim Walter, 25, near the goal line. With the win, a good kick to Walter at the four. Walter up near the 11 yard line. 38 yards was Van Berkeley's kick, and Jim Papai, number 51, made the stop for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. And Walter is still down. Some injuries early in this Grey Cup game. One each wave. Buchanan came back for Hamilton, 
And now Sandy Archer, the veteran Saskatchewan Rough Rider trainer, administering to Jim Walter, number 25. Well, Don, they talk about field position in these important ball games. And last week in the semifinal or the final game, the second game of the finals, the Hamilton Tiger Cats did exactly as they've done this afternoon. They received that opening kickoff and they marched that ball out of their own end and then punted the Ottawa Rough Riders deep in their own end and were able to maintain them in their end throughout the remainder of the ball game. And this field position again today is going to be a very important factor. Jim Waller's okay, just wins it out to the bench. This is Ron Lancaster with Saskatchewan's first play of the game. Bobby Thompson can't get outside at the 12. He's contained with a gain of one yard by George Wells, number 54. From New Mexico State and, of course, the Toronto Argonauts. Playing in his second consecutive Grey Cup game last year with Toronto. Another injured player out there. The score is Saskatchewan nothing and Hamilton nothing. And the 1972 Grey Cup game continues in just a moment. The injured player was Jack Avenshan for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, their starting left guard, and now Archie McCord, number 58, has come in to replace Avenshan for at least this one play coming up. It is second and nine at the 12-yard line of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Campana and Reed lined up behind Lancaster. Lancaster with a block from Campana, sideline release. He's got a strike at the 20 yard line. That was Gord Barwell, number 71, stopped by Lewis Porter, number 24. The gain is eight. And they appear to be just shy of the first down. About a yard and a half away as they now mark the ball near the 20 yard line. So third down, a yard and a half to go, Rough Riders. This will send Clark 15 and Sternberg number 33 back in the punt return combination for the kick from the Saskatchewan Rough Riders Bob Pierce number 12. With that win, a good kick and a better bounce back to the 25 yard line for Clark. And he's taken down at the 23. The tackle made by Ralph Galloway number 59. The punt traveled 65 yards. They lost three trying to run it back. And the Rough Riders of the Tie Cats pinned deep at their own 23 yard line for the next series of plays. Don, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders getting good coverage on that punt, a long punt, very low, but Ralph Galloway got down there fast. Garney Henley flanked wide to the left side. Tommy Joe Coffey is split on the right side, number 75. <laughs> This is Buchanan. Buchanan hit around the 28-yard line after a gain of five yards. Let's go to John Wells of the Saskatchewan bench. Saskatchewan Rough Riders picked up three injuries in their last couple of plays. Jack Avonchan uh, received a head injury, but he'll be all right and uh, back in the game after some smelling salts. Jim Walter has a slight rib injury, but he'll be back too. And Ted Dushinsky has a gash on his right hand, but he'll be back in action on the next set of defensive plays. This is second and five from the 28-yard line. Ely looking downfield under pressure. Now starts that scrambling of his. Away from Banuk. 30-yard line. He's got a first down, so he steps out of bounds near the 37. Roy Robinson, number 14, chased him out. Gain is nine and gives Hamilton the first down. Well, of the two early in the game, and it's still very early, Russ, Ely has had the opportunity to scramble and has certainly done more of that. Well, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders in a zone defense here, and as Chuck Ely goes back to pass, we'll see number 66, Tim Roth, come inside. He get caught to the inside there with a good block by Jerome Gant. He took him to the inside, allowed Ely to get outside, and got the first down. From the 38-yard line. Gain will be about two yards. Don Baduk, number 60, made the stop on Dave Buchanan. The mayor is Angelo Mosca, who today is playing in his final game after 15 CFL seasons, his ninth Grey Cup game. He's tying a record, I think, today, Don, with that ninth game. And of course, you know that Angie would just love to go out in storybook finish, as you did, in 1969 with a Grey Cup championship team. Two. 
This is Buchanan again. He looks healthy right now. As he's near center field into the Saskatchewan 54. They'll mark him near the 55, and the gain was 16 yards. Bruce Bennett, number 30, finally applied the tackle. Early in this ball game, it appears that the Hamilton Tiger Cats are going to try and get outside that Saskatchewan defense. They've been doing it since the opening play when they sent Fleming wide and up until this play now with Buchanan taking that short pitch out and just trying to get wide and get around that end and put the pressure on the outside the corners of the Saskatchewan defense. Buchanan's averaging eight yards a carry, four tries, 32 yards in this breakup game. Healy bailing out and he's no good. His primary receiver was on the left-hand side, Garney Henley deep. Richardson was in the area, but nowhere near the ball. So it becomes second down and 10 from center field. No score in this breakup game. About the halfway mark of the first quarter. It must be quite an experience for young Chuck Ely. He said his biggest game until today was the All-American Bowl. And I think he's finding out that the Grey Cup game is a much bigger contest than that. Richardson comes left with coffee for the second down play. That one broke it up early. Bill Baker, number 65, that aggressive defensive end for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, caught Buchanan for a loss of two. The score is Saskatchewan nothing and Hamilton nothing. The 1972 Grey Cup continues in just a moment. Third down at 12 yards to go for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Number 24 at the top of your screen is Bob Cossett replacing Jim Walters taken up a few plays ago. He's with 19, Steve Moeller stationed near the 15-yard line for the punt from Billy Van Brookville. Cossett up to the 19-yard line. A four-yard return met by Gord Christian, 72, and Tony Gabriel, number 77. The kick traveled 42 yards, so both the punters today exceeding their seasonal averages early in this game. Seven minutes and ten seconds to play in the opening quarter. And Avonshan is back in for Saskatchewan. That's good news for the Western champion. Two fakes. Lancaster is a marker is strong deep for Campano. It's picked off by Al Brenner. Brenner at the 53 yard line. He picked off 15 to set an all league record in the regular season, but we have a marker down. Lancaster faking to the back now and trying to run Campana down the seam with the Tiger Cats in his own defense, but Al Brenner, number 25 who's been doing it all year, moved in in front of Campana, and Lancaster actually didn't throw that ball far enough, and Campana made the tackle. Penalty against Saskatchewan for holding, and it is turned down naturally by the Tiger Cats, and they have a first down now on the Saskatchewan 52-yard line. Richardson on the right side with Coffey. Darnie Henley, the flanker, is loose on the left. Running and Buchanan are setback. Dave Fleming finding his way down to the 49. The gain is going to be three. It was stopped by Ted Dushinsky, number 27. So the first real turnover goes to Alan Brenner, the guy who did it so often all season for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. He picked a four and one game, the last league game against the Toronto Argonauts. Canada's outstanding player, Garney Henley, makes the catch at the 33-yard line. The gain is 16. Robinson brought him down. Well, Garney Henley just lining up outside Dushinsky, and he faked a little to the outside, came into the middle on a bend-in pattern, and found the slot between that outside halfback and the deep safety. But we didn't see in that isolation Dave Buchanan, who lined up in the backfield, came out into the flat, and he ran across Dushinsky's nose, and he forced him to stay to the outside. Tommy Joe Coffey and stepping out at the Saskatchewan 12-yard line. 
What happened there, Russ? Coffee got away from that Saskatchewan coverage. Well, the big situation there was Chuck Ely dropped straight back, and as the rush came on, they turned Bill Baker to the inside, the left defensive end, and Chuck Ely then rolled around him. It's what you call a drag pass in some terminology, where the quarterback goes straight back, lets the rush come to the pocket, and then they try and turn that defensive end to the inside. And they did that to Bill Baker that time. Let Ely to the outside. The corner must come up for Ely, and Tommy Joe just drops in behind him. Move the ball some 37 yards in two plays. That was a gain of 21. Buchanan. He cannot get away from Tim Roth, number 66. The loss back to the 16-yard line. Loss of four on the play. This is Hamilton's deepest penetration of the game. Their best scoring chance right here. Second and 14 coming up. Good play by Tim Roth there as John Homan pulled on him and Dave Fleming was leading the play and he split the middle of those two offensive players, came in and made the tackle and threw Buchanan for that four-yard loss. Five receivers downfield. That is a touchdown for Dave Fleming, number 21, as the Saskatchewan Rough Riders protested. But the official right there said he was inbounds when he made the catch, and that's what counts. Just a great catch by Dave Fleming here who went down with Roy Robinson, number 14, covering him man on man. And he turned to the outside and had Robinson turned a little to the inside. He had Robinson turned in and it was questionable whether he caught the ball inbounds or out of bounds. And the official right down the line called him inbounds for the first scoring points of the game. Ian Sutter will attempt the point after for the Tiger Cats. It is good. So Hamilton off to a converted touchdown lead. 7-0. Four minutes and 16 seconds left in the opening quarter. And on the scoring drive, they march 52 yards. Three passes, two rushes. Getting three first downs along the way. Capped by that 16-yard hit from Ely to Dave Fleming. Seven-nothing Hamilton. And congratulations all around to that Ticat bench for number 21. Ian Sutter getting squared away for the Hamilton kickoff. Tom Campana, 17. Bobby Thompson, number 26. Give it a short zone near the 20 yard line. Steve Molner. Molner is taken down across the 30 yard line. Bob Krause, number 14, made contact and he was grounded just outside the 30. We'll make it the 31. Return was 11 yards. Don Krause is a little shook up out there. He made sort of a head-on tackle on Molner, and he's not that small, Molner. He ran right over him, and Krause was a little slow getting up, but he's staying on there. Saskatchewan still in search of their first first down of the game. George Reed near the 33-yard line collects about two and a half before Inskeep 65 and Bloom 70 met him. That is the first carry for Reed in the game. Although you can look to see George carrying the ball as this afternoon goes along. Well, Ron Lancaster told me yesterday at their final practice, Don, that they were going to try and feel out the Tiger Cats and see what type of defense they were going to use. They expected two or three things from them, and he said, we have to find out what their pattern is going to be, then we'll try and work at whatever they give us. Second and eight. Open is Barwell, and he steps out ahead of the first down marker. This will be Saskatchewan's first first down of the game. Nine yards was the game. And this is what we felt the Saskatchewan Rough Riders might be doing today, Russ, and that's working those very short sideline out patterns. And so far, that's been their biggest play. Well, this is what the uh, Ottawa Rough Riders did in that first game of the two-game total point with Lewis Porter and John Williams playing up so tight and basically in a zone defense, they must retreat very quickly to get deep in that zone. And therefore, an outside receiver who goes down about seven yards and breaks to the outside does have an advantage on them. Ready, set, hot, hot. 
And Penn is slipping, getting just back to the line of scrimmage. Mike Bloom and Bruce Smith pinning him down for the Tiger Cat. The score is Hamilton 7 and Saskatchewan nothing. The 1972 Grey Cup game continues in just a moment. And these exuberant fans from all parts of Canada, but certainly the largest number from the immediate Hamilton area, out in force to cheer on the Tiger Cats, and there's always a great advantage in playing a Grey Cup game at home. Winning a Grey Cup game at home, that's something else. Ron Lancaster, second and 10, 42-yard line of Saskatchewan. Marker has been thrown. This is George Reed. He did not have the first down. He was tackled at the 48-yard line by Lewis Porter. Let's go down where we wait the flag to Bob Moyer at the Eastern Bank. Don, I was just talking to Dave Fleming after he caught that touchdown pass, and he said that Saskatchewan defense has so much respect for Garney Henley that it made it easy for Dave because they froze on Henley and he went down there. And then Dave said, you know, the next time we're in that situation, I think what they might do is go to that other guy, the guy who won the big award. All right, Bob, for the second time in this game, Saskatchewan has been called for holding. It has been declined this time by the Hamilton Tiger Cats, so it leaves the Riders third down with still four to go from their own 48-yard line. The first time they had the penalty, Alan Brenner made the interception, and of course it stood. The Tiger Cats sending back Sternberg with Clark inside their own 15-yard line. That's Clark on the left. Bob Pierce is the Saskatchewan punter. He has it blocked on it. And Hamilton is inside the 15-yard line as Bobby Krause recovered the block kick, or made the block kick. And it was Williams, John Williams, number 23, getting in there. Here we see this block punt, and we don't see the low snap that Bob Pierce isn't getting. He, the ball bounced to him, he fielded it, and then it was blocked now by Kraus, number 14, and John Williams, who was coming in from the left side, picked it up, and Pierce made the tackle. And he was complaining that he took the ball away from Williams. But here we have the second big break for the Hamilton Tiger Cats, first and 10 on the Saskatchewan 15. The draw to Buchanan and the Rough Riders read it perfectly. Charlie Collins, number 31, getting to him. The loss is going to be three yards, back near the 19. It will be second and 13 now. <laughs> Baker, Banuk. For Doni and Rob, the whole dig in. Ely, a good block for him. No one there in that corner. The closest man to it was Ted Dushinsky of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Dave Fleming had been the intended pass receiver, but he didn't reach the area of the ball. Well, both Fleming and Garney Henley, who had gone out to that side, looked at each other after the ball was thrown, and I'm sure each of them thought the other one was going to the corner, and as Chuck Ely put it out there, there was just no one there. Saskatchewan Rough Riders, who don't blitz too often, came on with Roy Robinson that time up the middle, but he was picked up by number 20, Dave Buchanan. Ian Sutter's field goal attempt will come from the 27-yard line, just about straight away. And the young man who booted five last week has his first of the day. And it gives the Tiger Cats a lead of 10 to nothing. We have a minute and two seconds to play in this opening quarter at Ivor Wynn Stadium. 27-yard field goal by Sutter. The converted touchdown scored by Dave Fleming. And it's been all tie cats in the opening quarter. The Riders at first down from their own 35-yard line. Barwell is set wide on the right side. Campana is on left. Thompson now in motion left. Number 26 to George Reed has the ball with a five-yard gain of the 40. Met by Mike Bloom, number 70. Reed's second carry of the game. Here's John Wells again. 
Thanks, Don. Uh, Jim Walter was injured uh, for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders early in this game. Has now gone to the dressing room. Apparently, he's got some bruised ribs, but the doctors aren't taking any chances, so they're going to go in and take a closer look in the dressing room. It'll mean Cost will be running back punts for the Rough Riders. All right, John, this is second down from the 40 yard line, and five to go for the Rough Riders. George Reed again, and he comes up with the first down, I believe, at the 45 yard line. As the Riders start to go, they're dependable number 34 more frequently. Angelo Mosca, 68, and Bruce Smith, 61. The two defensive tackles were there to make the stop, and now they confirm it is a first down for Reed and the Rough Riders. Two straight carries, five yards apiece. Clyde Brock working on the right side against Inskeep and Angelo Mosca and Ralph Galloway, the other offensive tackle, trying to clear things on the left side against George Wells and Bruce Smith. Number 42, uh, Larry Bird was uh, shaken up on that play, Don, and John Reed, number 44, has come in to replace him at offensive center. That was Saskatchewan's second to first down of the game. The ball tipped, but it's completed to Allen Ford across the 55-yard line for the third Saskatchewan first down of the day. The game was 11. Rick Shaw, number 17, a big 6-4 defensive back, made the Hamilton tackle. And that was the final play of the opening quarter. The score is Hamilton 10 and Saskatchewan nothing. The 1972 breakup game continues in just a moment. These are the lovely young ladies from across Canada, the nine Miss Grey Cup contestants enjoying this breakup game, as I'm sure fans are all across the country. You know, Russ, Bob Layton, our statistician, points out that in terms of possession in the first quarter, Hamilton had the ball for 10 minutes of the 15. And there you see the stats as they compare the two teams in the opening 15 minutes of play. Mostly Hamilton. All points Hamilton scored against the win. Lancaster to begin the second quarter with a handoff to George Reed. Good opening as the big fullback gets inside the 45-yard line. The gain is going to be nine yards. He was stopped by Alan Brenner, number 25, for Hamilton. Now, the first two or three times that Reed carried the ball off tackle, he went to the inside and didn't get too many yards. And on that particular play, he started to the inside, broke around the outside, and made about nine yards. One yard to go, Don. The Saskatchewan team now going to their short yardage offense. They bring in those big backs, and you don't know which way Reed's going to go, but 90% of the time, he's going to get the ball. This time it is Steve Moeller at the 40-yard line. Moeller with a gain of four has more than enough for the first down. Mark Cosmos, the middle linebacker, number 45, met him. You know, Cosmos was saying before the game it was a real challenge to him to be uh, confronting George Reed, as Wayne Harris has done over the years in the West. It's Ted Dushinsky there at the Saskatchewan bench, putting that hand in ice. Pitch out to George Reed again. The big guy starts to go. Brenner finally has him at the 20-yard line. Saskatchewan's longest gain of the day. 21 yards for number 34. Well, a good call by Ron Lancaster that time because the Hamilton defense was in more or less a split six defense. They've got two linebackers, both Bloom and Cosmos, on the inside. And once they got Reed outside, they had a lot of running room because John Williams didn't have Mike Bloom out there on the corner. He came up to turn it up, and Al Brenner was well downfield and didn't come up fast enough. From the 19 of Hamilton, Saskatchewan's best scoring chance of the day, right here. This is Gordon Barwell. He has the first down near the eight-yard line. Lewis Porter, 24, and Al Brenner, 25, combined to bring him down as the Rough Riders get their offense moving. Well, the Hamilton defensive backs have been playing off about 12 yards on the Saskatchewan receivers, and the short pass plays are going to be successful for Saskatchewan as long as they continue to play off. That time, Ronnie Lancaster almost overthrew Barwell, but he made a good catch and got the first down. Ford and Barwell are wide right to Hannah on the left side. First and touchdown to go. There's 
the first to step and score the Great Cup game, Tom Campana. The West Top rookie of 1972. Is he happy? As are Saskatchewan fans right across the country. Don Lewis Porter is a little upset because on that particular play, Bob Pierce ran to the inside and he is complaining that he was screened off. You see Bob Pierce here now. He starts to the inside, and you can see that number 33 Sternberg gets blocked out of there by Pierce. And Lewis Porter, they were playing man on man, who was coming across, saw this, and he complained to the official. But the touchdown's going to stand, and we now have the score 10 to 6 with the convert to come by Jack Abinshaw. And there it is, a 10 7 great cup day. You begin to wonder what the advantage of wind is all about because all the points have gone against it. The score is Hamilton 10 and Saskatchewan 7. With Russ Jackson, this is Don Chevrier. As the Hamilton Tiger Cats beat receivers await Jack Avonchan's kickoff following Saskatchewan's first touchdown of the Grey Cup game. Porter 24 and Clark 15 awaiting this kick from Avonchan. The Riders went 75 yards to score in that last drive. Bouncing near the 10 yard line for Porter. Reversing his field, right side he'll try. And he could not get past his own blocker at the 25-yard line, and that is where it ends. A 15-yard return. Let's see that last Saskatchewan touchdown, Russ. Well, we don't see now, but we see Ronnie Lancaster going back, and the Tiger Cats are in a man-to-man -man defense. And Campana and Pierce crossed, and as Pierce came to the inside, he took Jerry Sternberg out of the play, who had to try and get to the outside to cover Campana and just couldn't make it. Lewis Porter was injured on that kickoff return. That's the fourth player we've had down in this game, and we've only reached the three-minute mark of the second quarter. Porter appears to be in some pain. He was trying to avoid one of his blockers at the 25-yard line, ran up the back, and uh, there he remained after the play. And now the Hamilton medical staff coming out to have a look at him. Well, it appeared that he was running behind George Wells there and tripped over him. And then number 58, Archie McCord, really drilled him as he was down there. And he is still down on the ground. Well, Porter represents tremendous speed both ways and on kickoffs of the Hamilton Tiger Cats. So he's certainly a man they can ill afford to lose. Well, in that second game of the two-game total point, they used him on offense a great deal. They were playing both he and Garney Henley both ways. Garney Henley was being moved into the defensive backfield, replacing Sternberg. And then they had Lewis Porter playing on the opposite side from Garney Henley to try and give them some speed on both sides. So he will be missed, and he is still down on the ground. We've well, had 17 points scored so far in the game, and uh, quite a few observers expected a low-scoring breakup game. I must admit that I was one of them, but I think it's time to reconsider now because we've seen both these teams very capable of scoring in explosive fashion. Jerry Williams with Garney Henley has a right to be concerned now because you talk about Lewis Porter, you look around the Hamilton lineup, and uh, the other speed is represented by number 26, Garney Henley. We're very constantly to lose one of these players. Porter is with the Denver Broncos and the Kansas City Chiefs in the National Football League. And then he joined Hamilton uh, in midseason as a flanker, 1971. And he has become a fixture here in Tiger Cat Town ever since. Don, there are a lot of banners around Iverwind Stadium today, and there we have one. I'm sure it must have come from the West. You may be sure. Go Saskatchewan Grey Cup 1972. Right now, they're three points away from that objective. Trailing 10 to 7 is Lewis Porter. He has helped to the Hamilton bench on the far side of Iverwind Stadium. We'll await a report from Bob Moyer as to the extent of Porter's injury, but it appears to be of a more serious nature than the previous injuries encountered in this game. They played two minutes and 50 seconds in the second quarter. And as we mentioned previously, all the points, oddly enough, have come against the win. Tiger Cats coming out for their first down just short of their own 25-yard line. The pitch to Dave Fleming. Fleming has no game. Stopped by the Saskatchewan Rough Riders charging linebacker Charlie Collins, number 31, who covered the outside very well and didn't give him a chance to make a break on it. Second and ten to come. 
Well, the success naturally of the Hamilton Tiger Cats was running that short side, and that time they weren't able to do it. There we see Lewis Porter being looked after by the team doctors of the Hamilton Tiger Cats, Dr. Jim Charters. Ely getting away from Baker and wide open is Tommy Joe Coffey. He stays in bound. The 50 yard line, the 43 yard line of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. He might have stepped out. Let's see where they mark him. They're going to bring it back and uh, charge 10 yards against it. Back at the 47 yard line, it's more like 20 yards. The gain is going to be 24. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders on that play were in a blitz with Steve Sweetak, the middle linebacker, coming on. And number 65, Bill Baker, again, led Chuck Ealy to the outside. The pressure had been put on up the middle by the middle linebacker. And in a situation like that, you don't want to let that quarterback outside. And once Ealy got out there, Tommy Joe Coffey was all alone. Very close as to whether he stayed in bonds. They said he did not. So it's about the 47-yard line. Ealy looking. And the short pitch to Richardson. Center field, the Saskatchewan 51-yard line. And that will be a first down for Hamilton. 12-yard gain for the East Canadian Rookie of the Year, Richardson, met again by Charlie Cullen. When they're keeping track of tackles made in this game, I think the name Charlie Cullen, certainly in the first half, maybe near the top of that list. Bill Baker probably a little upset at letting Ely outside on the last play. Gave him a pretty good shot as he let that ball go that time. This is from the Saskatchewan 51-yard line. Dave Fleming away from one, and then surrounded at the 49-yard line. The gain is going to be two. Rock Perdoni made the stop. Let's find out more about Lewis Porter now from Bob Moyer. Don, the doctor told me that they're really not exactly certain what is wrong with him right now. What happened was that one of the Saskatchewan players in tackling him on that play need him in the back. They don't think it's uh, purposeful or anything. It's just the way the knees went into his back, and they're not exactly sure what they're dealing with at the moment. All right, Bob, this is second down and eight for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. 49-yard line. Ely has to hurry. And Coffey looked up as the ball arrived. Ashinsky saw it a split second before him and knocked it away. But both the receiver and the pass defender were really unaware of that ball's presence until the last second or so. Well, Dushinsky made a great play there to knock that ball down, but the interesting part of that particular play was that Steve Sweetak, the middle linebacker with Saskatchewan in a man-to-man -man defense, had coverage on Dave Buchanan. We don't see him coming out here, but he has to cover Dave Buchanan. But here we see Tommy Joe Coffey and Dushinsky going up and Dushinsky knocking that ball down. But that's a quarterback's dream to get that middle linebacker on one of your fast backs. But Chuck Ealy didn't pick that up. Ely now five for nine on a total of 89 yards in passing in this game as Van Berkelio kicks on third down. With the wind, down to Bob Costa at the 10-yard line, and he was taken down immediately. Good downfield tackle by Tony Gabriel, number 77. The kick went 39 yards. The return was only two, so they'll start from the 13-yard line with nine minutes and eight seconds to play until halftime. And a reminder to stay with us for an exciting halftime show here at the Grey Cup in Hamilton. 10-7 is the score. Tie Cats over the Rough Riders. Barwell, 71, goes to the right. Bobby Pierce, number 12, is split left. Covered by Alan Brenner. This is Ron Lancaster. And that was Thompson getting across the 15-yard line to about the 60. The gain is four yards. Met by Gary Inskeep, 65. Don, the change with Lewis Porter out of there. Garney Henley has now gone into the defensive backfield and is playing that free safety where Al Brenner usually plays. And Al Brenner has now moved out to play that right corner spot. So Henley is certainly going to have to uh, show what he can do both ways as Canada's outstanding player. Second down, Lancaster, a marker is thrown, wrong pass, Martin Brenner's got the ball with the interception, no one there to stop him, he's into the end zone. Let's see what the marker was all about. Don, I think that George Wells jumped offside. That will bring it back. It will be no touchdown. George Wells just jumping across the line of scrimmage ahead of that play. 
And they're going to mark it around the 21 yard line and resume play from there. But what a break that would have been. Brenner in open field making an easy interception. And there is the offside indication from referee Don Barker against the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Well, that's one of the plays you think you can run when you've got Porter and Williams out there. But again, here we have a situation with Al Brenner out there. And here we have George Wells going offside on that play. And he stayed down on his knees for a long time after that. But Al Brenner plays that corner a little different than Lewis Porter. And he was there when that pass was thrown. For the first down again, George Reed, the 29-yard line. They were second down and two to go after the five-yard penalty. Reed gaining seven. Garney Henley back there on defense made the tackle on Reed. Now as the game progresses we're seeing more and more of George Reed as the top running threat for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Not used in the early drives coming on more and more every time the Riders get the ball. Gordon Barwell right through his hands the 35 yard line. Barwell looking for his third catch of the day. The score is Hamilton 10 and Saskatchewan 7. 10 to 7 it is for Hamilton. Ron Lancaster emphasizing the short pass has been good on 6 of 8 for 52 yards and the one touchdown as Lewis Porter talks with Dr. James Charters of the Hamilton Football Club. Porter has not returned since his injury. This is 2nd and 10. Big charge on Lancaster, just got it away, and Henley was the closest man to the ball. Lost balance, couldn't make the interception. So it goes to third down as Lancaster's completion average goes to six for nine now. Garney Henley having a real workout since that injury to Lois Porter. Here's Bob Moyer once again. Don, with Lewis Porter, the story is that he will go back into the ball game. All they want to do is make sure that he's all right before he goes back in. And what they certainly don't want to do at this moment is use the designated import, who is Bill Van Berkeley. If they did, then Porter would be unable to return, but he will get back. Bob Pierce's putt near center field. This is Clark. And at the Hamilton 52-yard line, Clark is taken out by Ralph Galloway, number 59, and Archie McCord, number 58. 10-7 score, favoring Hamilton with six and a half minutes to go in the first half. And some Hamilton support from Smooth Rock Falls. Where is that? You had to ask me that, didn't you? <laughs> Where do I get my map here? Cannon has five cross center field at the 53 yard line of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, met by Bill Baker, number 65. The Saskatchewan linebackers, Don, are jumping around a fair bit in there as Chuck Ely comes up on the ball, especially Steve Sweetak and Chuck Collins, numbers 51 and 31, respectively. They're trying to put a little more pressure on a rookie quarterback in a game like this so that he won't know exactly where they are lined up. We now have three linebackers lined up inside the defensive ends. Ely's got five receivers fanned out for the second down play. The pitch goes to Buchanan. Buchanan is caught early. They do not have the first down. Might have lost the yard on that play. It was stopped by Don Badoop. Right defensive tackle for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, number 60. So Buchanan now in nine carries is 27 yards on the day, losing one right there. It is well, third down and six. Don Benup got a good outside charge there because, as I mentioned just before the play started, the three Saskatchewan linebackers were all inside the defensive end. So those defensive tackles and defensive ends knew they could go to the outside, and he ran right into the ball carrier. Moeller is 19, Costa 24, back near the 15-yard line for this kick. Again, a low snap, and Berkeley O getting it away. Line drive type of punt to toss it out to the 25-yard line, and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders will start from there. The kick traveled 32 yards. Ken Ferguson made the tackle number 52. Just over five minutes until halftime. 10-7 Tiger Cats over Rough Riders. And for December the 3rd, you couldn't ask for a better day than the weather we have right here at Ivor Wynn Stadium in Hamilton. 35 degrees, wind of 10 to 15 miles an hour. 
going from left to right as you watch this game. Lancaster out to Allen Ford. This should be a first down as they mark him at the 35-yard line. Ford met by Rick Shaw, 17. Mike Bloom, the left corner linebacker, number 70 for Hamilton. But the most effective weapon has been the short passing game of Ronnie Lancaster. Well, Rick Shaw is playing off a gain here about 10 yards, and Ronnie Lancaster just going back about four yards and laying that ball out. And Alan Ford is lined up in the slot there with Barwell to the outside or Pierce and taking those for 10-yard gains. But the Saskatchewan offense now is spreading that Tiger Cat defense right across the field. The pitch to George Reed, trying to get him outside, gets a block, and is caught around the 39-yard line by Alan Brenner, number 25. Will Done. be a four-yard gain for George Reed. If Al Brenner doesn't make that tackle on the outside there, George Reed had a lot of running room down that sideline because they had the entire Tiger Cat defense pinned on the inside. And if Brenner doesn't come in behind the block, make the tackle, then we've got the problem. Here we see it again now. We have the low angle shot with George Reed coming around the end and Al Brenner coming inside, making the tackle. Otherwise, he had a lot of running room. Second down and six from the 39-yard line. <laughs> Another short toss, this one to Tom Campana, looks for that first down marker, steps out in front of it. It should be a Saskatchewan first down. Bob Krause forced him out. These teams, of course, have played in four previous national championship games. And the Tiger Cat teams, Hamilton teams, have won them all, the most recent being in 1967. Ron Lancaster again staying on that short passing game and Campana coming to the outside here gets the first down and we see Lewis Porter number 24 who is back in the ball game in that right corner spot for the Tiger Kings. Reed. Again not much of an opening as he tried the right side was met after a gain of maybe one by Rick Shaw and Gary Inski. And characters of all types here in Hamilton. He's got more ribbons on than the guy selling souvenirs <laughs> had, had in downtown Hamilton. I wonder who he's cheering for. Just over three minutes until halftime. Second and nine. Alan Ford looks for the first down. He breaks a tackle to the 44-yard line. Ford stopped by Alan Brenner finally as he got loose on the first tackle and picked up a 20-yard gain on the play. That last completion was the longest of the day for Ron Lancaster, a 20-yarder, Russ. Well, Alan Ford again working on Rick Shaw. We see him coming up number 17, and the key is he's coming up to make that tackle. They've got Rick Shaw off the line about 12 yards, and they're just working on that area now, trying to complete those passes for the first downs. But when Shaw missed the tackle, it gave Alan Ford plenty of running room. Dave Scrine has seen Lancaster hit on 9 of 12 for 88 yards and one touchdown. He's having a fine day. This is George Reed, number 34, room outside, and he uses it down to the 34-yard line. He was clotheslined finally by Mark Cosmos, number 45. One of the few head-on confrontations between the battle lines we thought might be drawn, Cosmos, the linebacker, against Reed, the running back. George Reed going outside now, and Mike Bloom being fought off by the offensive block, and as George Reed comes in the middle, we'll watch Cosmos come across, and he clotheslined George Reed and took him right off his feet. Saskatchewan on the move. It's time to score. Two and a half left in the second quarter. The fake by Lancaster going back 15 yards. Still looking now. The escape on the right side. A marker's been thrown. The ball tossed out of bounds. A marker in the area of Big Angelo Mosca. You don't see that too happen too often, Don, with Saskatchewan. There was a mix-up in the backfield there with the experience they had back there. And Hamilton now has been called for unnecessary roughness, and I'm sure with that incompletion, that the Saskatchewan team will take that penalty and move them again closer to the Hamilton goal line with a first down. That is a big penalty for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders against Hamilton. Goes inside the 20-yard line. They put the ball down at the 18, and the Riders will go first down from there with 2.17 to play in the first half. But little experience showing there with Ron Lancaster. He actually was almost throwing that ball away, but he picked a spot where there weren't too many people, but there were a few white sweaters around. It's 
team fell behind 10 nothing and then Ronnie got that short passing game to work and now Saskatchewan driving late in the second quarter. Campana Ford and Barwell all fanned out of the left side. Here's the pitch to George Reed going right behind Clyde Brock. Can't find much of an opening. Maybe a yard near the 17. Gary Inskeep, 65 from defensive end. The former Toronto Argonaut and New York Giant filled that hole in quickly. A little adjustment there on the defense for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. They had that same formation where they have Ford out wide in front of number 17 Rick Shaw. But they moved the cornerback Mike Bloom out on his head. And therefore they wouldn't let them complete that short pass in front of Shaw. The gain was only a yard, second and nine to come as that Hamilton defense huddles and now settles in for this play. Outside yellow. Wide open is Campana, but he's got to find some yards. He does not have the first down. Stopped at the 12 yard line by Alan Brenner. And Saskatchewan is three away from the first down. Well, the Hamilton Tiger Cats in a full out blitz that time with the middle linebacker and one of the outside linebackers coming on. And Ron Lancaster had to throw that ball just a little before he wanted. And Campana wasn't able to get the first down. We'll probably have an attempt at a field goal. Here we have him coming out here now with the blitz on. Campana getting the ball and then seeing he was surrounded, tried to get the first down but was three yards short. This will bring on Jack Avenshan Russ with Lancaster set to hold for him. Slight angle left from the 20 yard line. This could tie it up. It does. A tie game. Avenshan hitting for the Saskatchewan left -handed. They've each scored a touchdown via the pass. They've each picked up a field goal. And it is all tough. The same out of the field against the wind. A minute and 41 seconds until halftime. And there it is. Saskatchewan 10 and Hamilton 10. Jack Avenchan, of course, the highest scorer in Saskatchewan Rough Rider history, adding three more right there. And here's Chuck Ely getting the tie cats away to the 47 yard line. The strike to Garney Henley, seeing two way duty at times because of Lewis Porter's injury earlier, and then spelling off Jerry Sternberg from time to time. A busy day for Garney Henley. A good hit by number 24, Bob Cossett, as Henley caught that ball just curling into the middle against that Saskatchewan zone. And Saskatchewan's going to have to be careful they don't give up too many of those short passes. Otherwise, Hamilton could get close enough to attempt at least a field goal. Healy wants to lead back by the half. He shot for Buchanan, overthrew him. Bennett back there covering for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Let's go to Johnny Wells now at the Saskatchewan bench. Don, just talking to Bill Baker, the Saskatchewan Rough Rider defensive end, he was having uh, problems getting through to Chuck Ely early because the Hamilton Tiger Cats were lining up on the outside, uh, farther on the outside. Baker thinks that they can make uh, some adjustments. The Riders did think that they were going to go to the big blitz early in the uh, game, and they haven't uh, quite made it to Ely so far. Don? From the 47, this is second and 10. Ely rolling. Looking, he's got receivers downfield into the medium zone for Garney Henley. 45-yard line, and he tried to get outside. Was caught just in time from the Saskatchewan standpoint by Bob Cossett. Because had Henley been able to swing to the left side, he had wide open spaces down the sideline. A minute and two left. The ball is at the 44-yard line, and Hamilton moving. Well, that's something that Chuck Ely's been doing all year. Once he starts to scramble a bit, he looks for Henley. And here we see Henley on the isolation. He never quits. He's always looking for an open area. And Chuck Ely always seems to look for that number 26, Garney Henley. The game was 19. This is the draw to Buchanan. And in a real traffic jab, contained back at the 49, the loss is 5. Saskatchewan reading those Hamilton draw plays very, very well today. Rock Perdoni, who was with the Tie Cats last year, number 64, and Charlie Collins, 31, were the two Saskatchewan tacklers. Well, actually, Don, if any of the defensive linemen take an inside charge on the offensive blocker, there isn't much chance for that draw play to work. And on that particular play, the two inside tackles came to the inside and ran right up, right into the ball carrier, Dave Buchanan. Ely in trouble, and he'll go down back at the 50-yard line. The loss will be 12. Tim Roth and Bill Baker, the two defensive ends, getting to Chuck Ely. And now we have only 27 seconds left 
in the second quarter. A couple of big plays by the Saskatchewan defense. Here we see five of them coming on, putting the rush on Chuck Ealy, and the two successive losses that they put on the Hamilton Tiger Cats has put them out of range of any possibility of a field goal. Roth finally getting in there, number 66 to pin Ealy, but all five Saskatchewan defensive players who came on on the rush put pressure on Ealy and didn't give him any chance to set up to look downfield for a potential receiver. On third and 24, number 24, Bob Cossett and 19, Steve Molnar await the punt from Van Berkelio back at the Saskatchewan 25. Off the side of his foot, a wobbler that bounces at the 25-yard line. Then takes a hop back to the 19 for Molnar, and he's down at the 16-yard line. Three seconds left. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders will have time for one more play. With the bounce, the kick traveled 40 yards. So it looks as though they'll go into the dressing room at halftime, even in this 1972 Grey Cup game. And a reminder again, that great Grey Cup halftime show will be coming up right here. Bob Pierce comes out left. Gord Barwell, 71 to the right side. Thompson and Reed set behind Lancaster for what should be the final play of the first half. It's a handoff to Reed, swinging right, met by Angelo Mosca, number 68, near the 17-yard line. And that is all for the opening half of the 1972 Canadian Football Championship. The score is Saskatchewan 10 and Hamilton 10. I shall thank you to Don Chevrier and Russ Jackson for working the first half of this football game. It's all tied up at 10-10. And everybody predicted 72 would be one of the great Grey Cups of all time. And boy, we are right on schedule. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders will be sending back Tom Campana, number 17, and Bobby Thompson, number 26, to receive. Waiting for the kickoff from the far hash mark for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. The youngster returned 19, Ian Sunder, number 36, and the second half is underway. That's Bobby Thompson from the 16-yard line. He was up to the 40 and down to the 42-yard line. Bobby Thompson for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, a 49-yard kickoff and a 26-yard return. A 10-10 ball game, eight seconds gone in the second half, and there's what happened statistically in the first 30 minutes. Now Saskatchewan will be first and 10 at the Saskatchewan 42-yard line. Lancaster, Reed, Campana, Ford, Barwell, and Thompson. Over to Tom Campana, who breaks to the 55-yard line. Keeps fighting all the way to the Hamilton 50. He picks up 18 yards. It is first and 10 for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Well, again, Ronnie Lancaster going to those short men, picking things out. And you'll notice here, Mike Bloom just runs away from this ball. And uh, he's completely out of the play. And Tom Campana just takes it in. And Ronnie Lancaster finds him with one of those little short pro passes. Saskatchewan Rough Riders going with the wind in the third quarter in a 10-10 ball game. First down at the Hamilton 50. Lancaster. And now we have a mix-up on those receivers as we had uh, Barwell and Thompson both down there and the ball was well in between them. What a great day. Great to be a Canadian to watch a great Canadian show with a halftime show that just is the best that the Great Cup Championship has ever seen and many adjectives have been used and we'd like to add ours as a special thanks to the people of Hamilton. It was sensational. Second and ten Saskatchewan at the 50. Out there to Campana, lost his balance down to the 46-yard line. Tried to recover, but had to settle for four. Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Club that didn't do much blitzing earlier, did today. Well, again, Ronnie Lancaster going with the short stuff. You notice he was able to throw that ball a little off balance, and uh, Campana unable to hold his feet. You always try and cut back against the green because you know that that defensive back is going to go across you. If you can get him to go across and come around, he can pick up that extra yard. He just couldn't hold his footing on this one. Third down and six for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, and Pierce just got that off its tip that went over the line of scrimmage, and Saskatchewan has to give yards. They didn't. The flag is down. Bob Krause has recovered. And so that ball, even though it was tipped, 
wound up with a, a total four yards. Well, we talk about quarterbacks only having certain time to, to uh, throw that ball. Kickers are the same way. Lewis Porter was the one that came in from the outside. He has the farthest distance to go, but he's able to use that speed to his advantage, get a piece of that football, and then the Hamilton Tiger Cats recover on it. Even though that ball was tipped, and even though it just got across the line of scrimmage, even if it goes only a half a yard over the line of scrimmage, you must give the, the no yards, and that, of course, was the penalty. You saw Saskatchewan backpedaling, trying to get away from the ball, but they were simply trapped. And so Hamilton takes over, first and 10, at the Hamilton 53-yard line. Buchanan. And Buchanan is hit by Rock Perdoni, Don Benuke, and Wayne Shaw. And he just got over that line of scrimmage, might have picked up about a yard on the play, maybe even well, less than that. Dave Buchanan has now carried the ball 11 times for a total of 23 yards, and he's only the second Tiger Cat to ever go over 1,000 yards in one season. Jerry McDougall was the other. Second down. Haley down the center, and it's good to Garney Henley, and he's up to the 38-yard line. Big first down for Garney Henley, 18 yards. Well, let's take a look at the Shinley Award winner, Garney Henley on isolation. And when you have a zone defense, your defensive backs have got to react more to that ball as it leaves the quarterback's hand. You notice here that he's able to take it in. Just a little curl-in pattern, not really pretty as far as running a pattern's concerned, but it's effective. And so Hamilton moved to the Saskatchewan 38, first and 10. Healy steps back out of that pocket. And it's finally pulled down by Sweet Tack, and there's a flag on the play. A clipping penalty is being called. Chuck Ely, who had a sensational 65 streak going. Well, Chuck Ely again, he had a couple of men open, but look how he fakes that little looking downfield, going to pump it, and then he takes off with it. He tries to set up a block here with that little fake to the outside, but uh, Dave Fleming is called for blocking from the rear on Bob Cossett. That's going to cost him about 15 years. Ball is going to be marched back. There's the indication of the clipping penalty. And the referee, Don Barker of Vancouver. That'll bring it back, 15. coming back from the original line of scrimmage at the 38-yard line. There's the indication of the clipping penalty again by the referee. It'll bring the ball back to the 53-yard line. It'll be first down over again and 25 yards to go. 11.53 remaining in the third quarter of a 10-10 ball game. Porter now out there as a wide flanker. Really? Hit by Wayne Shaw, knocked off balance, and Ted Toshinsky drives him out. Two former Saskatoon Hilltops teaming up to hold him to a gain of two. Hamilton Tiger Cats turning an interception on a block kick into 10 points in the first half. Saskatchewan marching back at a 75 yard drive and then kicking the field goal. Jack Avonshan made it a 10 10 ball game. Second and 23 for the Hamilton Tiger Cats at the Saskatchewan 52. Healy <laughs> getting a lot of time to throw to Henley, and he does not hold on. And Roy Robinson made a sensational recovery because Garney Henley, for a fraction of a second, had his hands on it, but not long enough to squeeze it. Well, it looked like he was going to put that one in his hip pocket going for the bomb on this play. Chuck Ely looking to one side. It's a good quarterbacking job there. Looking to one side, coming back to the man, Garney Henley, and as you mentioned, Roy Robinson making a big play. I'm really surprised, though. Uh, we've gone through the, uh, a whole half of a football game, and I don't think we've seen a, I don't think we've seen a screen pass, and uh, you'd think that they would be doing that. There you got a chance to see it again from a different angle. Notice that ball just knocked away. And the third and 23 from Van Berkelio. Kick is taken by Steve Molner, and Molner is down on the 19-yard line. 
34 yard kick and a three yard return. So the Saskatchewan Rough Riders who have the wind in this third quarter. A club that has met the Hamilton Tiger Cats four times in Grey Cups. Four times they've lost to Hamilton in Grey Cups. And they dearly doubt to break that jinx today. First down at the 20. Lancaster to George Reed. And he is knocked off balance as George Wells turned him back inside. Just got enough of his shoulder on her and dropped him. The score is Saskatchewan 10 and Hamilton 10. The 1972 Grey Cup game continues in just a moment. John, with the way the momentum of the game is going, you got Bob Pierce in your backfield. He was a quarterback in his days, and I know in practice watching him this week that he can throw that football. It might not be a bad opportunity to go with that halfback option. Well, I'm sure that each club has put a couple of those in that they haven't unveiled too often during the season, and they'll wait for the right moment. Now Saskatchewan, second and ten at their own 20-yard line, and they have the win. And there it is to Bobby Pierce. Look at this, get scramble. He lost his balance on the 50-yard line because that might have been the same one that when this season opened here on July 31st, he did that and went all the way with it. Well, I got half of it right. It was Bob Pierce anyway, even though it wasn't the halfback option. But Ronnie Lancaster looking to the outside and then Bob Pierce taking it down and sort of squaring it across the middle, getting it inside of his receiver and then putting that second effort on it to make a real fine reception. 31-yard gain and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders are first down at their own 50. 10-10 ball game. 9.48 remaining in the third quarter. Reed. And Reed is met right at the line of scrimmage. The all-time great rusher in the CFL. And two coaches who were formerly Coach of the Year, Jerry Williams in 1967 and Dave Scrine back in 1964. Second down and nine and a half yards to go. Saskatchewan at the Saskatchewan 50. Lancaster has to hurry that throw and it's pulled down at the 46 yard line. There's a flag on the play. The pass is ruled incomplete. They ruled that he trapped the ball. And there might have been an interference call going downfield. Bob Pierce, 185 pound versatile back, does everything for them. John, what happens? You, you find that your defensive backs give you the uh, inside a little bit, and here they had that sort of switching pattern on again. And uh, he was unable to complete the pass, but uh, there was interference on the play on the far side, so the, they pick up the gain anyway. That moves the ball to the Hamilton Tiger Cat 48 yard line. It'll be first down and 10 yards to go for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders as they are leading trainer in years of service, Sandy Archer looks on at the Saskatchewan bench. Thompson. Bobby Thompson, number 26, into the 41-yard line, gaining seven yards on the play. Thompson for Saskatchewan scored seven touchdowns this year, but all of them were on the pass. Second down, three yards to go for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. In a 10-10 ball game, 8-23 remaining in the third quarter. Now Barwell, Ford, Campana all set out to the left. Thompson and Bobby Pierce to the right. George Reed, and Reed is hit behind the line, and he is dropped. Tried to follow the blocking in there of Gary Brandt. But Brandt was cut off, and he was held right at the line of scrimmage, so it'll be third down and three, and that'll bring out Jack Abenshan. Now the line of scrimmage is the 41. Abenshan's longest field goal this season was 48 yards. It's a 10-10 ball game, Saskatchewan kicking with the win. Abenshan now has 671 points. That makes him the third all-time scorer in the CFL. 
No good. It's wide. Clark. And he is driven out at the eight-yard line. Clark wanting to prove to Saskatchewan that he's a good ball player. Went to their camp and didn't make it. The score is Saskatchewan 10 and Hamilton 10. The 1972 Grey Cup game continues in just a moment. <laughs> It's a 10-10 ball game, and we have 7.37 remaining in the third quarter. Hamilton, Tiger Cats. Mitchell at center, Chalupka and home on the All-Star guards. Gant. Danny Chuck the tackles. And Buchanan is met by Rock Perdoni. Renzo Rock Perdoni, who was brought up the All-American from Georgia, brought up by Hamilton and Cut. One of Peg Edmonton, and then he replaced the great Ed McWhorters when McWhorters went out with the uh, knee operation late in the 1972 campaign. Second down and ten and a half yards to go. Now they have Henley split to the left. Coffee and Lewis Porter wide to the right. Finally gets some heat on, uh, but the pass is taken by Fleming. He's caught in there by number 60 for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Don Banyuk. We got very close to that first down territory. And they don't have to bring the sticks very far to find out. But well, you're going to see a good defensive rush here by Bill Baker, but uh, the ball has gotten away to Fleming. But notice the second effort that Fleming puts forth. He's nailed back upfield, and he has to dive for about three yards to make sure that they got that first down. A big play. Give him 11 yards on the play. It'll be first and 10 now for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. The ball is at the Hamilton 20-yard line. Healy. He's that inside open up. Look at him go. And he finally lost his balance and was dropped at the 39-yard line. Chuck Healy. Picks up 19 yards along the way. Well, John, I'm not really convinced this fellow's a quarterback, although he's back there passing the ball, because he's got the moves of any good halfback. You look how he's, he's throwing his shoulders, weight all around, and balance as well. And he's picked up 51 yards running so far this afternoon. First down as the toss goes to Buchanan. And Buchanan has trouble trying to get to the outside as Roy Robinson and Ted Dashinsky come up to stop him for a gain of four. Well, this 1972 season opened right here in Hamilton. It was Hamilton beating Saskatchewan 20 to 17 on a last minute field goal. Bob Pierce and Lewis Porter gave us some heroics that day. Right now we have 525 remaining in the third quarter. It's a 10 10 ball game and Hamilton is second down and five at their own 44. He gets outside the rush again, and he hits Bernie Henley. Henley faked to the inside, turned to the outside, didn't have any room to go. The sideline was right there, but he picked up 13 yards. Well, again, let's take a look at Garney Henley as he goes down, just looks to the inside. That's a real good fake to the inside. I think he noticed that the quarterback was rushed on the play, and he was going to the outside, so he went to an open spot. Real good receiver will do. Henley has caught five for 78 yards, and the Tiger Cats are first and ten at the Saskatchewan 54. Going against the 15-mile-an-hour wind. The toss to Buchanan. And he's hit in there by Wayne Shaw, number 50. Then he got a little bit of help in there from uh, Don Banyuk. He just got about a yard over the line of scrimmage. So, having an opportunity to see two ball players do a lot of two-way action, Henley and Porter. They're both out there as wide flankers now. Second down, nine and a half yards to go. For the Tiger Cats. Healy. Goes to Henley, and Henley hit by Charlie Collins. Those Rough Riders are putting a little something extra in each of those tackles now, Dick. The gain is eight. 
It'll be third down and uh, about a yard and a half to go. Jerry Williams, known as one of the most conservative uh, coaches of the year. Well, you, we'll show you what John was talking about when we mentioned the fact a little extra effort put in at number 31, Charlie Collins. He's the man that comes up and makes the tackle on this play. Watch that right arm. Oh, missed his head, but he's down anyway. Jerry Williams not taking any chances in a 10-10 ball game with a yard and a half to go. Sends Bill Van Berkeleo to his own 50. Saskatchewan has Molnar and Cossett back to receive. Molnar at his own four-yard line. He hit by Tony Gabriel and dropped at the five-yard line. That's a 42-yard kick and a three-yard return. And so the Saskatchewan Rough Riders come out onto the field, read by Ronnie Lancaster. Probably when he went there in 1963, might have been the biggest bargain in the history of sport for $350. They've never missed the playoff since. Now Saskatchewan, first down at their own five-yard line. 3.34 to go in this third quarter. Thompson trying to get outside with a Jack Abincham, but the best he can do is get up to that seven-yard line. Like I mentioned earlier that Dave Scrine was the coach of the year in 64. He was coach of the year in 63. Brought to mind by the fact that uh, Frank Clare is the only coach to become coach of the year to win the Grey Cup the same year as Russ Jackson was the only man to win the Shunley Award and win the Grey Cup the same year. Second down, seven yards to go at the eight. Whoops. <laughs> George Reed. And he's cut right off. Bruce Smith is in there to grab him, but the flags are down. Still a 10-10 ball game as it was at the half. Well, we'll show you that back again. Uh, a lot of times your line, especially in a crowd like this, a lot of your outside men can't hear the cadence of the quarterback. In this particular case, Clyde Brock, number 67 on the right side, was the one that came across and they were caught. Naturally, the Hamilton defense was up for that one, so they're not going to bother uh, with the penalty. <laughs> Well, they don't miss much at the Grey Cup. The ball is at the uh, six and a half, seven yard line. It is third down and eight and a half yards to go. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders with 2.43 left to play with the wind. And strangely enough, that Hamilton defense has been able to uh, stay real tough on George Reed. And in the last four carries, they have been able to hold George Reed to a loss of two yards. Third down, eight and a half yards to go. And Bob Pierce is about eight yards back in his own end zone. That was almost blocked. Might have even been tipped. The ball is taken by Sternberg, and there's a no-yards penalty called, and the Hamilton Tiger Cats will take over at the 33, and they'll add another 10 to it. Well, we're going to take uh, another look at this one. This is the third kick that the Hamilton Tiger Cats have had a piece of today. Here you have the split screen look at the receivers and also the defensive man going in. It's Bob Krause who got a piece of that football. And then, of course, the uh, Jerry Sternberg was able to pick it up and the no yards called. So Hamilton's got it in great field position. And so the Hamilton Tiger Cats are first down at the Saskatchewan Rough Rider 26 and a half yard line. Healy. And chased from behind by Tim Ross, throwing long down there, and it is knocked. It's intercepted. Roy Robinson. What a sensational interception. Brings it out to the 16-yard uh, line. That's one of the great ones. Well, Bob Richardson is just wide open in the end zone. Ely sees him, and then he fires the ball to him. The only trouble is he doesn't really have that much on the football. He's trying to get it down there to him, and uh, the ball has just popped loose. You take a look for yourself. You notice he's scrambling around there. He finds Richardson. He has to throw off balance. That's why there's not much on it. And then Ted Dushinsky knocks the ball loose. Roy Robinson picks it up. Saskatchewan at the 16-yard line, first and 10. 
as Lancaster looks away out there and he's got Tom Campana up to the 26 stop down eventually at the 27 yard line Tom Campana we might have seen just the uh, top play of the whole ball game John because that play would have meant six points for the Hamilton Tiger Cats and here uh, Saskatchewan ends up with it. Saskatchewan picking up 11 yards and the ball is at the 27 yard line and it is first and 10 for the Riders. 114 remaining in the third quarter. Lancaster and he hits Allen Ford. The ball pops loose. Ford was hit by a rickshaw and Al Brenner together. And that's a pretty good hit with those two coming. Uh, pretty tough to hold on to the ball in that kind of a crowd. John, as you look at the uh, Grey Cup records, you look at Alan Ford, and he holds two. He holds the longest punt record of 87 yards in the 67 Grey Cup, and he also holds the longest kickoff return, 78 yards in the 69 Grey Cup. His father was an old Regina Rough Rider back in the 20s. Second down and 10 to go for Saskatchewan up to 27. Lancaster looking over there to Tom Campana, and finally Mark Cosmos drives him out at the 47-yard line. Big first down as this 13-year veteran Ron Lancaster sits back there and starts picking his spots. Well, Tom Campana, just the most valuable player on this ball club because when there's work to be done, Campana's usually the one, whether it be kickoff return or having to go down under a reception or carry the ball from the halfback position, a very valuable asset to these uh, Rough Riders out of Ohio State. First down at the Saskatchewan Rough Rider 47-yard line. George Reed keeps driving. Look at him carry Al Brenner down to the 53-yard line, and that's very, very close to a first down. And some of the distinguished guests at the 1972 Grey Cup game, the commissioner, Jacob Dar, Ralph Sazio right behind him, the outstanding coach. This, is this uh, Hamilton club over the years, now the part owner, Bill Clark of Regina, the president of the CFL, Premier Davis. The ambassador from Finland is here today. We were talking to him. He said he was in Toronto and Lincoln Alexander uh, said uh, he would find a seat for him and he did. So they're coming from all over. John, you know, when you get into important ball games, you get uh, pretty protective and you want to hide out your ball club. It even happens in high school. Uh, notice that Beamsville down the road here was playing uh, Dennis Morris in a game and they were so protected they wanted to keep the uh, everybody away from it. And after this play, I'll get back and tell you the rest of that story. <laughs> First down, Saskatchewan at the Hamilton 52-yard line. Thompson, and Thompson is hit by Mike Bloom and drop. First door was closed. He tried to find a second, and Mike Bloom didn't give it to him. I was telling you about the schools playing down the road here. They uh, noticed a car at the end of the road, a guy with binoculars in it. They went down, shook the car, and told the guy to get out. I got to want to know who it is. It ended up it was Jerry Williams there to see his son Todd practice. He didn't want to interfere. <laughs> Second down and ten and a half yards to go, Saskatchewan. A good rush on Lancaster this time. Has to unload. It's intercepted. Jerry Sternberg brings it up to the 52-yard line. The Hamilton Tiger Cats pick another one off. So that ends the third quarter. Score Saskatchewan 10 and Hamilton 10. The 1972 Grey Cup game continues in just a moment. Saskatchewan held the ball for 8 minutes and 12 seconds during that quarter, and Hamilton 648. There's the last part of that play. It was a full blitz on, so that your defensive backs have to pay up and play their man, man for man. Played a little tighter. Jerry Sternberg, anticipating the play, is able to pick off the ball for Hamilton. Hamilton starts this fourth quarter, first and ten at their own 51. The toss is to Fleming. And Fleming is caught in there by Rock Perdoni, number 64, and he's dropped after a gain of three or four yards on the play. Dave Fleming has carried the ball five times for a total of 17 yards. Well, the rock from Rock Perdoni is the fact that uh, he isn't able to get in on a pass rush and get in there and use that height to his advantage to knock passes down, but certainly as well as the, uh, as far as the lateral movement's concerned, you can't fault him in that department. Second down and seven yards to go for the Cats at the 53. 
Really, that's a long look. And there, <laughs> Dave Fleming. Now they're going to be forced to bring out the kicking unit. Jack Ely had it took a long, long time to get that one out. Total possession in the ball game is very, very close. Uh, Hamilton has had the ball for almost just 23 minutes. Saskatchewan just over 22. So the score indicates the share of the offensive play. On this third down and seven situation, Van Berkeley at his own 40. Almost blocked in there by Tim Roth. That's Steve Molnar at the 15-yard line. Gord Christian had a piece of him, lost him, and then dropped him back at the 14. That's a 41-yard kick and a loss of two on the return. Hamilton Tiger Cats, a team that has won 11 Eastern Championships and five Grey Cups in the past 20 years. They're in for the 12th time, which ties Toronto Argonauts for most appearances in the Grey Cup Championship. Saskatchewan Rough Riders going against the 15 mile an hour wind. Will scrimmage first and 10 at the Saskatchewan 14 yard line. Barwell and Pierce split wide. George Reed. And they go to the 21 yard line, carrying two ball players with him Jerry Sternberg and the defensive end, George Wells. All-star in the Eastern Conference. George Reed now has 83 yards. He holds just about every rushing record there is. Second down and three yards to go for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Back again with a 10 year veteran, George Reed, and that's very, very close to a first down. But may require the yard sticks. Strangely enough, Dick, that win hasn't meant that much, hasn't been much of a factor today. No, it hasn't because we've seen a lot of the scoring done while we've had uh, going against the win. You know, this Hamilton Defensive Club is really something. They're really a together unit. And you talk to Angie Mosca, he can tell you just uh, how much so they are. And especially when you get together and you talk about the defensive unit. He talks about Smith and, uh, and Wells on the outside. He says, introduce these two fellows together because they share one brain together. <laughs> and then he talks about number 65, uh, Inskeep, on the other side, his fellow that uh, is beside him. He says, call him Thumbtacks. He's got legs like Thumbtacks. <laughs> Saskatchewan has a first down at the Saskatchewan 24-yard line in a 10-10 ball game. Lancaster to Reed, and Reed is met in there by Mark Cosmos. Now he might lose a yard on the play. Mark Cosmos, a 242-pound, has just made his sixth unassisted tackle. He's made the assists on two, so he's been in on eight. He took exception to a remark that we made earlier in the season that he might not be big enough to stop inside running. He said, we'll show you. Second down and 10 at the Saskatchewan 24. Oh, that big blitz is on, and the pass was almost intercepted. There's a flag on the play. They were trying to screen George Reed. And uh, in order to break up that screen, I think that Hamilton jumped the gun. Well, you see the rush from the ground level there, all those middle linemen, the only thing it didn't show you was just at the, the left part of your screen was an old thumbtacks. Gary Inkeep was offside on the play by about 10 yards. <laughs> thumbtacks at 258 pounds. Second down and five yards to go for Saskatchewan at their own 29-yard line. 11.32 to play. Lancaster way out there to Thompson, and he does not have it. Oh, he had a ton of space. That'll make it third and five. Boy, those are the ones that drive you crazy. That ball just hangs up there, hangs up there, and you keep waiting for it to get to you. It's uh, just floating down there, and he sort of tries to jump up in the air and grab the thing. He's so anxious he wants to get a hold of it, and consequently, you, your hands are like boards. You just can't hold on to it. 
Back to receive the fine punt return pair of Jerry Sternberg, number 33, and Dave Clark, number 15. They each dropped one on the opening game of the season here, and then between them only dropped once during the rest of the year. That was, boy, that was close to being blocked. They're getting tremendous rush. Clark at the 43. And he hit there by Don Seaman, number 79. 38-yard kick and a two-yard return. The fine Saskatoon product, Don Seaman. The score is Saskatchewan 10 and Hamilton 10. The 1972 Grey Cup game continues in just a moment. The great veteran Angelo Mosca says this is his last game as a professional football player. A defensive conference going on with Jerry Williams, who converted this club from a club that used to rely on defensive giants that committed mayhem to a club that added a lot of finesse, high scoring, and record crowds and attendance here at Hamilton this year. The Thai Cats are first and ten at their own 45-yard line. Healy, who steps back inside that hole, hit by Charlie Collins and then regained his balance and went out at the midfield stripe, and that should be enough for the first down. Chuck Healy, probably the, well, I think he's the greatest rookie ever to play in the CFL. Just a sensational year. Well, again, you get a chance to see Chuck Ely as he shows you that he knows what he's doing all the time. He knows where that yard mark is as uh, he tries to come around this side and run right into you. Uh, just jumping over that yard mark to get that first down. Hamilton, first and ten at midfield. 10-31 remaining in the ball game. A 10-10 score. Ely over the center, and it is no good. Intended for Garney Henley, and Roy Robinson was there to almost pick it off. Henley, the all-time scorer in college football with his record of 394 points, said last year at the end of the year he hoped to play one more year so that maybe he'd get a chance to play offense, and what a chance he's had. Lewis Porter comes in. Now it'll be Porter, number 24, who'll go to the top of your screen, and Henley, 26, right there at the bottom. Second and 10. There's the long one down there for Porter, and it's intercepted by Lewis Cook. Here he comes, number 16, looking for blocking. And he comes all the way to the 50-yard line. There's a flag in the play, and didn't that look like the one he pulled off against Winnipeg? There's a clipping penalty. Well, we were isolating here, or taking a look at Lewis Porter. As we look at it from the end zone, notice... Chuck Ely, the play was sent in from the bench. Lewis Porter is going down deep, a post pattern, but Lewis Cook is there to uh, intercept the ball. He takes it back upfield, but number 64, Rock Perdoni, is called there. As you noticed, uh, the body's going by. Here you get a chance to see Lewis Porter as he goes down deep, and Lewis Cook anticipating his move, just laying back there and making the play. There, right there, as the player went by that was Rock Perdona getting caught for clipping. Saskatchewan first down at the Saskatchewan 26 yard line 938 remaining in the ball game they give to George Reed and Reed is hit by Cosmos and number 61 Bruce Smith Bruce Smith played for Jerry Williams in uh, Philadelphia and then phoned up one day and asked for a tryout and Hamilton came up and has become his starting defensive tackle the day he arrived Second down and nine yards to go. Saskatchewan at their own 27. Over here to Gordon Barwell. And he's up to the 35-yard line. He's about a yard short of a first down in a very crucial position. He kept digging and fighting, and he's still complaining to the referee that they didn't move it as far as he thought it had been. Well, those defensive backs are still uh, playing these uh, offensive men back awfully deep. They're just uh, giving them too much room. And, of course, Ronnie Lancaster going up the line of scrimmage. He notices how deep they're lined up. So, consequently, he automatics at the line and just goes with the short stuff. Okay, Bob. John, uh, Ham Hamilton has been uh, very successful against that Saskatchewan punt, and I talked to four members of the defensive line, and they all said the same thing. It's just straight, aggressive blocking and rushing by those uh, front four and uh, the outside linebackers and nothing else. No tricks. Okay, third down on the yard to go, Saskatchewan. 
George Reed and Reed looks like he's over the 35 yard line and that should be enough for the first down. Charlie Collins rushes off the field holding his hand in the air saluting victory for George Reed. We have eight minutes and 35 seconds left on the clock. You just got to see the last part of the uh, power that George Reed had. You had uh, all 12 men bunched in there just ready to stop anything that came through. But uh, when you get George Reed with a full head of steam and got that body moving forward with those legs grinding it out, it's pretty hard to stop him from gaining a yard. For those who believe in omens, the Saskatchewan, at least the uh, Hamilton Tiger Cats, made great comebacks in 1959, 61, and 64. And then they proceeded to lose all three of those great cups. Right now, Saskatchewan is first down at the Saskatchewan 36. This is Bobby Thompson. And he is cut off from behind by Bob Krause, number 14. Just got over the line of scrimmage, might have picked up a yard. Bob Krause, a nine-year veteran who came right out of Central High School in Hamilton to the Tiger Cats, and he's calling their defensive signals for them. Eight minutes, two seconds left in the ball game. Second down, nine yards to go. Saskatchewan up to Saskatchewan, 37. Barwell again and he holds on to this one as he's hit by Mike Bloom and he leans forward this time and they oh they move the ball back they move the ball back so again they're going to be third down and about two feet to go I guess the officials are going to cut back on uh, what I'd mentioned on one of our broadcasts earlier the fact that uh, according to surveys any game played on artificial turf you pick up an extra 10 to 20 yards because of the players bouncing off of the artificial turf. <laughs> Gordon Barwell has caught five for 44 yards today. Strangely enough, uh, Bobby Thompson, who caught 51 during the season, was the leading receiver for Saskatchewan, has not caught a pass. Now, Saskatchewan is not going to gamble. Bob Pierce is back to do the kicking. The wobbler up. Dave Clark watches it go and it goes out. Oh no, it turned back in and uh, he is driven out of there by Rob Pine, number 15, a 46 yard kick. So rookie Rob Pine. Seven minutes and nine seconds left in this 1972 Grey Cup battle. The Hamilton Tiger Cats have the football first and 10 at their own 20 yard line. Henley and coming to the right this time. Gabriel Richardson and Coffee to the left. Healy to the sideline, and it's good to the 37-yard line, and that uh, is going to be a gain of 17 yards. Tommy Joe Coffey, the all-time leading scorer in the CFL with 971 points. Picked up 17 to the 36. Tiger Cats with 6.49 remaining. They're looking to get down a kicking territory this late in the game. Oh, that rush is on Ely by Wayne Shaw. Turns it back in. Here's the pass out there to Buchanan. He's got it. Dave Buchanan. And there's a flag on the play. Buchanan makes a great catch, and I believe the call is for clipping. Well, you could see that play coming, but uh, Buchanan had to swing out of the backfield. Now, what happens is the middle linebacker, number 51, Steve Sweetak, has to go over and cover him. Well, he committed himself too much so that the, the quarterback, Ely, was able to lead him. You notice him laying back there on the ground, and Buchanan takes the ball in. The only trouble is it was a pretty play and has to come back. 15-yard penalty for clipping. Makes a total of 67 yards in penalties. 
And that puts the ball back at the 37 yard line. It'll be first down and 10. Six minutes and 20 seconds left in the ball game. Buchanan again hit by Rock Perdoni. He came over from left tackle. Just drove him right across with Don Banuka on the right side, and uh, the gain is about one yard. Lewis Porter comes in, Bob Richardson goes out. John, we should explain the fact that uh, the play was completed, but Tommy Joe Coffey was caught for clipping on it, and that's why it had to come back, but it still was first down over again. Second down and nine yards to go. Hamilton Tiger Cats at their own 38 yard line. There's Ely throwing out there to Porter on Porter. Was dropped at the 49-yard line. He had Tommy Joe Coffey out there. He took a quick look at him to see if he could try a little bit of a lateral, but he thought he better hold on. Well, they learned by their last mistake, instead of going deep, they sent Lewis Porter down on the same pattern, only this time when he got back, he uh, hooked up about 15 yards and completed the pass. Okay, Let's go down to John, John Wells. Wells. Thanks, Johnny. Uh, just talking to a couple of members of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. They know they're in a football game down here. Don Seelan was telling me it's one of the hardest hitting football games he's been in. I'm sure it's evident on the screen. First down, Hamilton at the 49, and here's that rush on Ely, and they've got him back there at the 54-yard line. He almost shook loose with that tremendous physical ability of his and got back up to the, the Saskatchewan 54. Now the clock shows four minutes and 46 seconds left. John, as you uh, measure these two quarterbacks on their statistics, they're holding true. They're pretty even as far as the long gainers concerned, the number of touchdown passes. The big story is interceptions. Lancaster threw 20 during the year. Ely only eight. That's been holding true. And losses. Ely had 38 during the year. Ronnie Lancaster, six. Hamilton is second down and 15 yards to go at the 54. Ely. Is caught now and dropped. Bruce Bennett slowed him down. And finally, Bill Manchuk, number 75, came in. Manchuk had just come in to replace Wayne Shaw. And they dropped him. That'll make it third down and about 14 yards to go. Well, with four minutes and 14 seconds on the clock, We'll have Don Chevrier and Russ Jackson warming up just in case it should go into that first session of overtime. Bill Van Berkelio from his own 44. Steve Molnar back to the six yard line and he lost his balance as Gord Christian was in on top of him and he's dropped at the seven. 47 yard kick and a two yard return. Bill Van Berkeley, who had averaged 39 and a half during the season, come up with a 47-yarder when he really needed it. So this jam-packed audience of 35,000 at Iverwind Stadium witnessing a tense 10-10 battle. Hamilton went on top by 10. Now Saskatchewan first down at their own seven. George Reed. And Reed dives in underneath the pile to about the 13-yard line. And Saskatchewan uh, all afternoon has been faced with second down, long yardage situations. Second down and five yards to go for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. They're at their own 12-yard line. Caster over the middle there, Tom Campana up to the 21-yard line, catching it under tremendous pressure, and Campana has taken him out of a hole many times. There'll be a lot of winners here today. The Manitoba Sports Lottery Group, one of them is going to win 100000 on the game. The score is Saskatchewan 10 and Hamilton 10. The 1972 Grey Cup game continues in just a moment. You know, that gang of 2,900 out of Regina has kind of infected this crowd, and I think they're getting more support than Hamilton right now. First and 10, Saskatchewan at the Saskatchewan 21-yard line. Lancaster out there to Tom Campana, broke the first tackle, goes to the 26. He picked up five yards on the play. 
Two minutes and 45 seconds left in the, in the event of the score being tied. They would then go into overtime, of course. There you're taking a look at uh, Rick Shaw, who's been having a busy day all afternoon. A lot of people forget that he was a leading receiver for Winnipeg back in 1970. Shipped to the defense. Second down and five to go for Saskatchewan. Oh, and Lancaster slips and falls. Throws down here for Bobby Pierce, but he's got it. Down to the 48-yard line. What a great play. Lancaster slipped and fell. Got up and threw the pass for 36 yards to Bobby Pierce. Well, Bobby Pierce is blessed with that good speed that he can get behind his backs. And there you take a look at him on isolation as he gets down there and then he just turns it on behind uh, Lewis Porter. And he's got his eye on the ball all the way and he's able to anticipate the defensive man's move and move in front of it to make the completion. Saskatchewan first down at the Hamilton 48 yard line. Well, the ball is tipped at the line of scrimmage. It was intended for Al Ford. It'll be second down and 10 to go. Al Ford, the eight-year veteran. Lancaster has thrown 28, completed 20. There you see Ronnie Lancaster. He's a short quarterback, and once those linemen get their hands up there, and there's big Angie Mosca. He jumps up there and knocks that ball down. Second and 10 for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders at the Hamilton 48. Oh, that was intended for Gordon Barwell, but that was almost picked as Al Brenner was back there, and now Saskatchewan will be forced to kick on third and 10. As I said, in the event of a tie, the teams will be allowed to go to the dressing room for 10 minutes, and then an overtime game of two 10-minute halves will be played with the ball being kicked off at the commencement of each half, and the team which had the choice at the beginning of the regular game will again have the choice at the start of the overtime game. 10-10 the score. Two minutes left to go. Bob Pierce kicking from the Saskatchewan 50. Clark at the 12-yard line. He's almost slipped through that pocket, but then Rob Pine dropped him. It's interesting to note Rob Pine, the son of Wayne Pine, one of the great Saskatchewan Rough Rider players in bygone days, playing against Ian Sutter. They played against each other in the junior final this last year, right on the same field. Now we have one minute, 51 seconds left. Saskatchewan, a club that has never beaten Hamilton in four Grey Cup tries. Going to have to hold him in here. Healy over the center, and it's good there to Tony Gabriel for his first catch of the day. Up to the 43-yard line for a gain of 27 yards. Well, Tony Gabriel, and I believe that's his first reception of the day, he just goes down the middle and he gets behind everybody and it's wide open. They get the zone defense where everybody was back deep, afraid that they're going to go deep on him. They're going to have to watch the short stuff, though, because all Hamilton has to do is move it down the field with the short stuff for the last track to kick. First down at the Hamilton 42-yard line, and this game has gone wild over the middle here to Tony Gabriel. And Gabriel has another first down for 11 yards. One minute and 15 seconds left on the clock. And the panel try to choose the outstanding player of the game and the outstanding Canadian of the game have not done so. The outstanding player will receive the Labatt Award and a new car. The outstanding Canadian will be honored with the Dick Suderman Award. By Canadian Pacific, two trips anywhere. First down at the Hamilton 54-yard line. Heaney rushed. Throws out there, but he throws low. Intended for Dave Buchanan. And there we have the 10-10 ball game. 58 seconds remaining. Chuck Ely has completed 16 out of 27 for 259 yards. Ronnie Lancaster has completed 20 out of 28. Super day of quarterbacking. Greek defenses to meet it. 
Second and ten at the Hamilton 54. Really a gain over the middle. Let's get to Tony Gabriel, and he's down to the 42-yard line. 51 seconds left in the ball game. 15-yard gain for Tony Gabriel, who picked up his third catch of the day. Now has 53 yards. Well, what's happened is that the end is getting free. The linebackers are not dropping back deep enough and covering their area. And notice Steve Sweetak there just sort of gliding back and then reacting to the ball, but that's too late. Your deep men are have to be deep because they're afraid of getting burnt. So consequently, Chuck Ely is going with the short stuff and working it down the field, working Tony Gabriel to his advantage. Lewis Cook with the injured ankle. And this could be very costly for Saskatchewan because the Hamilton Tiger Cats now with 51 seconds left in the ball. You have plenty of time to figure out what their remaining st uh, strategic offense might be. Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Chuck Ely trying to get his last instructions as to what plays to call there from Jerry Williams while the Sandy Archer works on uh, Lewis Cook. That is really a cramp in his calf. And what happens in a game like this where you uh, sweat so much, if you can believe sweating in uh, 20 degree weather, uh, that you lose all the salt in your system. That's why a lot of the players take salt tablets all the time to keep from getting these cramps. But uh, there's not much you can do if it tightens up on you, you. The only thing you can do is try and relax and let him work it out. And just while we. Uh have a moment. We, it has been said before, but uh, on behalf of football fans everywhere, we'd like to congratulate Mayor Vic Cops and Grey Cup Committee Chairman Jack McDonald because they have done an uh, outstanding job, just a super job of putting it together. The city of Hamilton has turned out. The, the official attendance here is 33,953. John, if we could get our cameras to take a shot of some of the posters that are up on the uh, lamp posts uh, that are around the stadium, uh, these posters that are up by the lamp posts uh, that uh, were made by the high school students here in Hamilton that were painted by the different high school students. There you get a shot of one. These are huge things. They've just done an outstanding job of, it, of uh, decorating the stadium. Well, uh, Tom Campana is out there with uh, Tossid, uh, Bennett, Dushinsky, and Robinson. And uh, they catch him at the 41-yard line, Ely. Second down and about eight and a half yards to go. To catch that rejuggled Saskatchewan defensive backfield out there for you. The clock shows 42 seconds remaining. There's Jerome Gant, the right tackle. Tom Campana was a defensive back at Ohio State, but he's got that ability to play offense, so they shifted him to the offense. Here in Second down, eight and a half yards to go. Over the middle there, and it is good to the 26-yard line. That was Garney Henley. He made a great catch. 16 yards was the length of the gain, and it was second and long yardage. Garney Henley has eight catches for 119 yards. Well, another big play, as you notice it on split screen, Garney Henley running his pattern. He's got to be completely off balance, slipping, coming back to grab that ball. Charlie Collins was squawking the fact that uh, he felt that he had dropped the ball, but the official was right there, ruled. It's a completed pass, ball on the 26-yard line. First and 10 for Hamilton at the Saskatchewan 26. It's Buchanan, the ball carrier. He's dropped for a loss of one, but they're going to be staying very close to those goalposts. Now, will it be Ian Sutter? Or will they try one more? There's only 13 seconds left. They're not going to wait. Well, if this um, field goal is good, it would be a new record because only two have been kicked in a Grey Cup game. And now, the line of scrimmage will be the 27 yard line. If it's wide, will they return the kick? Saskatchewan has Al Ford back there along with Bob Pierce, two punters. Henley will hold. They'll try from the 34. It's good. And that'll be it, the last play of the game.
Dalton Tiger Cats on the last play of the game kick the field goal to beat the Saskatchewan Rough Riders 13 to 10. Young Ian Sutter, the pride of Dundee, Scotland, has been under tremendous pressure all year, came through under tremendous pressure again, and kicked the field goal to make it five straight break-up wins for Hamilton over Saskatchewan. And what a heartbreaking end for Saskatchewan, what a glorious end for the Hamilton Tiger Cats, the two teams that started the season here on July the 31st, have ended it here on December the 3rd, and one of the most thrilling Grey Cup games that we've ever had the privilege of attending. Well, Bob, just an outstanding job by Ian Sunder. Certainly it was set up by some great plays by the whole uh, Hamilton Tiger Cat offense and you uh, and defense, and you summed it up very well. I thought Saskatchewan certainly doesn't have to hang their head. It was just an outstanding football game by both clubs, both offensively and defensively, and I don't think you could ask for anything more in a national Grey Cup final than what we've seen today. Well, Angie Mosca, after 15 years, is going out in great style. Garney Henley, number 26, the outstanding player, Henley Award winner in 1972, down there to accept the trophy along with Commissioner Jake Goddard. Receiving the trophy from His Excellency. Down there with him is the general manager, Ralph Sazio. Ernie Afghanis is down there to try to catch a word with him. Game comeback by Saskatchewan from 10 points down to a 10 all time. It was one second away from going into overtime. Let's go downstairs now to Ernie Afghanis. All right, Pat, and we're just watching the presentation Beautiful. here. Mayor Copps has just congratulated. <laughs> Mayor Cops of Hamilton, uh, you must be very proud of your ball club. Well, I am, Ernie. Here. What a win and a great finish, a great game, a great week. We're tickled to death. Really delighted the way it's all gone. Okay. Very, very happy. And lots of luck in your election coming up tomorrow. Thanks, Ernie. Okay. Thanks very much. This may help a little. Right. Thank you. See if I can move in, Garney. Yes. Can we get it? Just turn around this way if we can. Okay. Angie, come on over here. Here they are with the trophy, two outstanding football players. Angelo, is this really your last football game in your career? It's a beautiful way to end it. I want to thank all of Canada for giving me the opportunity in this country. I love the Hamilton fans, and I sure appreciate everything. Thank you. Well, you've done a great job. Your ball club came through at the last moment. You stole that Saskatchewan script, I think. Well, <laughs> it was a good, hard-fought ball game, and we enjoyed playing Saskatchewan. We knew we were going to have our hands full, but uh, we, didn't, we knew we were just hoping going to win. That's Some all. of the players were saying this is the hardest-hitting game they've been in for a long, long time. Do you feel that way out there? Yes, it was. We knew it was going to be a tough physical struggle. We knew it was going to be a defensive game, but uh, we rose to the occasion. I'm just happy we won. Well, congratulations once again on your last ball game. It was a good one. Lots of luck in life, man. Thank you very much. Angelo Mosca and Garney Henley, the Shenley Award winner. Garney, what a great year for you, winning the Outstanding Player Award and coming through here with us. Great cup victory. Oh, yes, this has to be just outstanding. And, you know, we had such a team effort this year. It was, uh, you know, it's hard to explain what you do. But uh, believe me, I want to congratulate uh, Saskatchewan because they put up one real fight. And we knew that this is what's going to happen. And we're, we're just very... We're just very happy that uh, we won the ball game. Okay, thank you very much, Granny, for talking to us. Lots of luck to you again. You'll be back playing against here. Well, week. we'll see. <laughs> okay, we'll go up to Pat Mars. And Pat, I think they've made an announcement on the player award for the game. Well, Ernie, you're absolutely right. They have made the announcement that Chuck Ely has been selected as the outstanding player and Ian Sutter as the Canadian player of the game, and we will get to those presentations a little later on. The 1972 Grey Cup game is over. The final score is Hamilton 13, Saskatchewan 10. As you can see, a very happy band of Hamilton Tie Cats. Angelo Mosca helps the cameraman up, and I'll tell you, you will see a lot of football games. Probably in the next number of years, you won't find any more exciting, despite the fact that it was a very low-scoring ball game. On the final play, 13 to 10, the Hamilton Ticats win the 1972 Grey Cup Classic. 
And boy, I'll tell you, from the opening kickoff till the final moments, this was as close as that score would indicate. It was 10-0 for Hamilton. Saskatchewan caught up to tie it at the half at 10-10. And then both clubs playing extremely well defensively and yet moving the ball. We're able to saw it off until the final moments when Ian Sutter, who has really had a storyland first year in professional football, kicked what proved to be the winning field goal with no time remaining on the clock. Let's go to the dressing rooms. We got him, man. Da down here in the dressing room is a wild scene with Angie Mosca, the longtime veteran of the Hamilton Tiger Cats, and Garney Henley. Just bringing in the breakup, Garney. Garney, Garney Henley, come up here come up for a minute. Come on up here. <laughs> here we are. Can you make it up, Garney? Garney. All right, that last couple of seconds there, Garney, when you uh, caught that last pass, it almost got to the artificial turf. Practically, I had it uh, just in my left hand pretty good, and it just about got away, but I had it. This cap's a great season for Garney Henley and this, the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Listen, catch. this cap's a great season for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. You know, it has to be great for myself, but uh, believe me, I'm most happy with what we got today. Dave Fleming, as we came down the runway to the dressing room, said, man, those guys don't want to be beaten. That's right, exactly. We knew this before the game, but, you know, all the years I've played Saskatchewan, uh, you know, until that gun goes, that's you've got to be in there, otherwise they're going to beat you. Okay, Garney, right. once again, congratulations. Thank you. Trying to get Angela Angie. Mosca. Where's Angie? Angie. 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 Sure, get him up here. Certainly, uh, Bedlam we'll here. We're still waiting to find out the uh, 1972 winner of the Labatt Most Valuable Player Award and also the 1972 winner of the Dick uh, Suderman Award. And uh, we're trying to get some of the... Uh, Victorious Hamilton Tiger Cats to drop us. Angie, drop by over here to say Here's hi. Gordy Christian for you, John. Here you are. Gordy, there you are. You can you can talk to John here. Okay. Great. Go ahead. There, there you are. Go on. Great game. Uh, hard fought out there oh, all the way, Gordy. Great. Just great to win. We had uh, a little trouble out there today, but we ironed it all out. We're the champions of the East, and now we're the champions of the whole Canada. And we're going to take the States on someday, too, and be world champions. Gord, uh, Dave Fleming was telling us just as we came into the dressing room, one of the hardest foot football, hardest fought football games that uh, is imaginable. Certainly was, certainly was. The guys out there were just hitting and hitting and hitting and hitting. And I don't know, our guys just seem to stick it in there and just keep winning, that's all. What were your feelings late in the game, uh, Gord, coming into that 10-10 uh, tie at that point? The Rough Riders starting to move, and then you came back with that couple of big plays there to uh, Gabriel. Well, Chuck hadn't hit him all day, and he was wide open all day. And as soon as he started hitting him, as soon as he passed midfield, we knew we won the game. It was either a field goal or we're going to punt it out of the end zone. Okay, thanks very much, You're Gord welcome. Christian. Bob Moyer. Mr. Oyeno Labatt's to make the presentation of the game's outstanding player. Chuck Ely, the winner of the Outstanding Player Award for 1972, and Mr. Bruce Elliott from Labatt's, the president of Labatt's Ontario, to make the presentation. Bruce, Chuck, congratulations on Thank behalf of Labatt's and football fans across Canada. Tremendous game. Here are the keys to the Labatt's car and your personal trophy. Okay, thank you. Thank you I hope much. you never forget this great cup game. Hey, I won't with a car like that. Thank you. Thank Thanks you very, very much, Mr. Elliott. Chuck, a great football game out there this afternoon. Uh, hard hitting all the way. All the way. Uh, they played they play some pretty good defense on us, and uh, we played some good defense on them, so it was a tough game all the way. Chuck, you went to Gabriel very late in the football game uh, for some key receptions, key plays. Uh, yeah, I think we were just saving it for the end of the game. It was all planned, was it, Chuck? Yeah. Listen, you've had just a great year, your debut to Canadian football. Uh, how does it feel now? Is this the biggest moment? You've uh, been the Shenley winner, now the uh, outstanding player in the Grey Cup. Yeah, I think so. It's got to be the uh, top attraction, you know, being in the Grey Cup and winning it and being a quarterback in my first year. It's got to be the top uh, award for me this year. Congratulations on an outstanding season. Chuck Ely, the winner of the 1972 Labatt's Player of the Game Award here at the Grey Cup as the Hamilton Tiger Cats came on with a late victory. Looking for Bob Moyer and uh, coming up for the Canadian Pacific Dick Sitterman Award. Bob? All right, John, thanks very much. And we have Mr. J.C. Kilmer, the president of CP Airlines, to present the Dick Sitterman Award to the man who kicked the winning field goal, Ian Center. Well, that's a very easy thing today to be extremely sincere and offer warmest congratulations not only to your team but to you that that last pressure kick must have been really something so well uh, i didn't really feel the pressure was that much uh i feel i felt more pressure last week going into the ottawa game than i did this week somehow i, don't, I can't explain why it's just i think last week maybe was more of an emotional game than this week was 
but uh, well, I'm just happy I made the kick. And he's fortunate. It, I certainly felt the prize. Well, you know what I was going to say, Mr. Kilmer. He's going to be able to relax very easily with his CPR prize, oh, the Dick Sudeman right. Award. He can go anywhere on the line. That's right. Anywhere in our five continents, fifty thousand miles. You take your choice, plus a purse to do some traveling on. Okay. Two tickets anywhere. Thanks a lot. Very Thank you very much. Yeah, let me just ask you a few more. You mentioned about the game, the field goals you kicked last week. Did you think that you were going to get the opportunity to kick this one in this game? Uh, I think the game kind of had that look that it was going to come down to a field goal or a single point. Uh, Saskatchewan had their chance early on in the game, and uh, at the end of the game, we had our chance. And uh, Coach William asked Bill if he thought he could kick a ball through the end zone for a single point. Bill says, well, I think I have a good chance at it. And Coach Williams turned to me and he said, you, uh, you knew it was coming, did you? Oh. Coach Williams turned to me and he says, how do you feel? I says, well, I think I can make it. So he says, okay, go ahead. <laughs> you know what? That stuff stings when it gets in the eyes, doesn't yeah, it? Does. Okay, and congratulations. Once again, I'm winning the CP award. All right. Now, just before we go on with more players, let's go back up to Pat Marsden while we dry off. <laughs> The 1972 Grey Cup game is over. The final score is Hamilton 13, Saskatchewan 10, and we'll continue with our post-game show in a moment. Jan Pack Stadium saw one of the most thrilling football games you will ever witness, and two of the people most interested and just as excited as everybody else, Dick Shadow and Russ Jackson. Well, Russ, a little wet in the dressing room, and I thought Chuck Ely he didn't reveal too much when he said that he was going to Tony Gabriel late in the game by design. Well, he didn't say that, but it was set up, I believe, because three plays in a row, they lined up with that wide flankers with Buchanan, the only man in the backfield, rolled him to the left in motion, and then he went to Gabriel. Once deep, twice over the middle, and then the pass to Henley to set up the field goal. It had to be just well-designed, and there's the field goal, and Sutter did it two weeks in a row. Well, those sidewinders always uh, amaze me, the way they're able to get that ball through there. A real pressure kick, which Ian Sunner said didn't bother him too much. Just lays it up there, aims it for the right uh, crossbar, lets it bend in a little bit, and that's the end for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders this year. And it was that type of ball game all day, though, Dick. It was just one of those games where the defense was doing the job, and it was going to who was going to get that three points or single point to win the ball game. You're right. Well, let's go back downstairs to more activity in the dressing room. All right, let's all get a swing on this sucker. Well, we're back in the dressing room here as the Hamilton Tiger Cats, Fleming and Mosca are uh, into a little champagne out of the Grey Cup. Dave, congratulations. An excellent victory out there today. Thank you. I'll tell you what. We deserved it. So did they. They were, just, they were tough son of bitches out there. You can't take nothing from them. They came to play from the West. As the Is this the last one? Well, by the grace of God, I don't know if he wrote the script for me, but I, I know it's my last one. I said it was my last one. Uh, earlier on in the year and I'm just happy and I share all the thoughts of 31 other guys if you don't get to talk to them. Angie, when you brought, when you came up here you made sure the guy beside you came up, Gary Inske. Why? Well, well, he's my buddy, you know. I have a lot of feeling for these guys and before the ball game today I saw a sign. Thank you and goodbye, Angie. I appreciate everything that people have given me in Canada. Thank you. Angie, you've done great for Canadian football and I'll tell you, you've certainly made it a colorful sport and a very, very popular sport. You've helped to make it. We've appreciated it all the way. Was it nine Grey Cup finals? This was my ninth one, and I just thank everybody and everything and give me the opportunity to play Canadian professional football, and uh, I just thank everybody. Gary, what's it like playing next to a guy like this? There's only one horse, and I love him. And it's just remarkable that I don't know, today when Angie and I was doing warm-ups, you know, it's just an emotional thing to see this with goodbye and thanks to Angie. It just yeah. makes you... I want to try to win for, you know, for one guy. It's Dave, can one guy be the big leader like this? Oh, yeah, I think he is. When I first come here in 65, he, he was a leader, and he's still a leader. I, I was his roommate for eight years. I don't want him to do without him now. Okay, he Dave. Be in the den of, dens of a Nick way. I don't know where <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Johnny, got you got Tony, Tony Gabriel, Gabriel there. over here, and Tony had caught some big passes when it really counted near the end of the game. You never Thanks, John. Uh, hold on a second. Hey, hey, get those guys off. I got a code here. John, this is my first great cup. A tribute has to be made to all the ball players and the coaches this year. It's just been great. And in those dying minutes when you have a winner like Chuck Ely come through, he uh, watches the deep uh, safeties. And seeing that and they were playing the wide receivers, Garney Hanley and Tommy Jokavi, who had great games, playing them deep could hit me underneath. And I'm just glad that I could help bring this to us. Uh, 32 ball players. One heck of a team. Tony, congratulations on a great game and an excellent season. Now let's go back upstairs. Here's Pat Marsden. 
And needless to say, a very happy band of Hamilton Ticats. The 1972 Grey Cup game is over. The final score is Hamilton 13, Saskatchewan 10. We'll continue with our post-game show in a moment. Well, any old buddy in Western parlance, this can be called the barn burger. Well, I'll tell you, you know, I thought that when Saskatchewan had the ball in the dying moments, they were going to pull the same stunt they pulled in the West for quite a few seasons now. But Hamilton turned right around and pulled it on them. So I guess Saskatchewan can't be too much about it. They put up a tremendous football game. I thought the way the game started, it would be a runaway score, maybe 30 to 28. But defense was outstanding at times. And you know what's funny? When you look at football games, of course, at this time of the year, you look at quarterbacks, and you had two contrasting styles today, and yet both were just truly outstanding. Oh. I mean, that pass that Lancaster threw to Pierce that almost broke it open in the final few moments. He had slipped to the turf, got up, threw it beautifully, and it looked like he might go all the way. Well, as a matter of fact, I was standing with Frank Rigney. He says, uh-oh, they've done it again. And he almost did get away, as you said. But quarterbacking, when you look at a young man like Chuck Ely in his first Grey Cup, his first real season of professional football, he's an amazing young man. I, I'm just wondering what he will do to the CFL in the near future. Well, I don't think there's any question. And speaking with Russ, he said, you know, he really is amazing for being just a rookie in the league. He has some things to learn, right. but boy, I'll tell you, he has learned an awful lot in the last 10 ball games. And he's tough. He took some very hard hits down there. As a matter of fact, he took one just in front of us. I didn't think he'd get up, uh, but he's strong, good runner, and pretty good hit. You know, I'll tell you though, Ernie, uh, we're going to go back downstairs right now because standing by are some more members of the Hamilton Tiger Cats. You and I will be back and chat a little later. We've got a mob of Hamilton Tiger Cats here, starting off on the far side with uh, John Kraus. Bob, Bob, Bob Kraus, can you introduce, Bloom? Bloom? Can you introduce your friend? Mark. Mike Bloom. Listen, I'll tell you what. Early in the game, Bobby, I came over to ask you about those punts, how you were getting in on those punts, but you didn't want to talk then. You were too hyper. What do you got to say now? Well, I say, I say that Mark Mark was throwing a good block on Charlie Collins in the center, push, pulling him down, and Ange was taking the guard out, and I was going through there cleaning the first one, and then I was getting through on the second line. I'm, I got I was eating pigskin for the whole first half. I got to get a new set of teeth. <laughs> Mark? Listen, they, they're really enjoying that back upstairs, I'll tell you that. Listen, you could have been in Montreal. How lucky can a guy get at time? Well, I'd like to thank everybody back in Montreal for making it possible for me to be here. <laughs> I, know, I know they love it. And uh, I said it at the beginning of the year, and I'll say it again, that win a great cup, you got to have a Greek on the team. <laughs> hey, before we go any further, I just want to say hi to my wife, Brenda, in the hospital and tell her I'll be up to see her in about an hour. Okay, Mike, now let's go back to Ernie and Pat. Well, Ernie, as we sit here, I've got some interesting stats that I think should be passed along because the total yardage is 379 yards for Hamilton, 347 for Saskatchewan. Ely completed 18 of 29, Lancaster 20 of 29, and that, in a nutshell, is really how close this ball game was. The final score of the 1972 Grey Cup game is Hamilton 13, Saskatchewan 10. This is Pat Marsden saying goodbye for all our broadcast crews. Our sponsors, the CTV and CBC Television Networks, and the Canadian Football League as we come to the end of another great season of football entertainment.